I mean, as we sit here tonight, in practically every home in this mm. country, mm. this thing will be switched on. Yeah. And it will occupy, for most of the people, the evening hours. Anything to say about that at all? It's a potential social menace of the first magnitude. Australia's gift to the world of pop music. Joe is the writer, producer, and performer of our pop culture theme song, and he is a true friend of the show. And how you doing, everybody? This is your pal and fellow fan of pop culture, Steve Ludwig, welcoming you to another edition of Steve Ludwig's Classic Pop Culture, right here at planetludwig.com. Congratulations. We have all landed safely and peacefully at Planet Ludwig. And on this edition, show number 163, our guest is a gentleman who proudly served the country as a member of the U.S. Air Force and who then pursued his other dream and continues as an actor, producer, director, and writer who has appeared in movies, TV, music videos, you name it. Mr. David DeSico joins us right after we check out this small sampling of his acting. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? I'm not scared. I'm not scared of you anymore. You can get away from me. Get the hell away from me. Get away from me. Get away from me. Leave me alone! Harry? Get back! Now! Now! Get back! You wrecked my brother! But you forgot one, motherfucker! Get in the kitchen, and then I'll decide what to do. Gun, knife, knife, gun. Oh, <laughs> I think you made my decision for me. And that is a little more personal, so think about it. Come on, sweetie. Mm. Are you going to tell Sarah? This has nothing to do with Sarah. Are you? Of, of course not, but you're sort of... What? Engaged? You're gonna judge me. Now. No. Good. So, she shaves it? She does indeed, my skinny white brother. Wow. I know, right? <laughs> and she'll make you feel special too. Just think about those legs. Wrapped around you. Does she, um, know why she's here? Of course, we talked about it. So, you'll like leave? Yeah, I'll leave. She'll be all yours. No wonder why I don't learn anything ever. Because you don't do your own problems. Really? Thank yeah. you. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. Hey, what? Don't rip it. Come on, I got a question. A question? Yeah, I got a question. I paid you, no questions. Um, hello, you help me, I help you. I pay you, you do the problem. Maybe you could just do your own problem then. <sighs> Your fucking dead work! Take off that headband! Are you looking at me? Is that a nice one, Get your hands to me! 
Our guest, as you can tell from that acting reel, is a wonderful actor who's worked on projects such as Steven Spielberg's The Post, Martin Scorsese's The Irishman, TV's Gotham, Quantico, Blue Bloods, and among so many other projects that we'll talk about right now. It's my pleasure to finally, I've been waiting to talk to him for so long, to welcome to classic pop culture actor, producer, writer, director, Mr. David DeSico. Dave, welcome to the show. Hello, Steve. Thanks for having me, and thank you for your time. That's the most precious thing you can give anybody, and I'm very honored to be on the show. You do a great job. Oh, thank you, Dave. It's an honor to have you on. And, you know, speaking of being honored, before we even start talking about your still very busy acting career, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your service to our country as a member of the Air Force. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Priceless uh, time. Yeah. Um, what, what, what's, it, what's it like? <laughs> what was it like being in the Air Force? And <sighs> Well, um, <clears throat> out of high school, I got a job at ShopRite, and I, was, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, and then um, a friend of mine's father was uh, in the Air Force, and he suggested that, you know, we, we give that a try. So um, I was like, you know, there's nothing more than I can be, you know, that would make me uh, proud than to serve my country because I, I want to do something that I could be proud of. And just instead of just showing up to a job and not having any clue what I want to do. Sure. Um, and, I, and I knew that I would get the structure that I, I needed um, to do that also. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing, Dave. Thank you uh, again. Thank you. For- Thank you for serving our country and we, we all appreciate yeah. it. And it was, to answer your question, what was it like? It was, it was intense. It was hard. It was rewarding. And, uh, I would do maybe some of it again. <laughs> <laughs> some from column A, some from column B. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would, Im- I would imagine you, um, you know, you mentioned the word discipline. I, I'll, I'll, I would imagine you applied some of that discipline from the Air Force into your your acting field. That's true. Yeah. Um, uh, and also just my life in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, you know, yeah. It, it, like for example, uh, if you're not if you're not early, you're late. <laughs> so <laughs> when it comes to uh, getting to sets, I like to give myself extra time. You know, in case you hit traffic, and you just you don't want the crew. You know, the production team to be stressing out about where you are, you know. Yeah. Because they, they have their own stuff to do. And also when you get there, you don't really know where you're going most of the time. Mm-hmm. That's a great model to live by. Yeah. If, if you're not early or late. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> 15, 15 minutes early is fine, not, not a couple hours. Just yeah, right. Just clear that up. <laughs> then you become a pain in the neck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy is yeah. still here. Is he really in the, in the movie? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Why don't we get talking about your, your – I mean, my goodness, what a voluminous career you've had so far. It's still going so strong. Can I just throw a few titles at you and, um, you know, we can, you can give us a little thumbnail of, of, of each one? Sure. Now, um, you, oh, one of your projects was The Post, Steven Spielberg's The Post. Yes. How did that what – was, what was that one all about? Well, uh, it's funny because I was a military soldier and, um, we were at the, uh, filming. So we were at, a the campgrounds, uh, basically in, in like the war zone. And, uh, right. you know, so, um, during that, so, you know, so we're just doing whatever they had background people do typical, whatever. And, uh, so during one of the breaks, I like to, I, I like to be a little smooth, I, I would call it, and kind of eavesdrop on what the crew is talking about. You know, like their dialogue with the director, yeah, they're absolutely. doing the, uh, yeah. these walkie-talkies, so you can kind of hear. Um, and then so I knew that they were looking for somebody for something. So mm-hmm. I, so as soon as I, when the uh, production members came over to where the background people were, I kind of, uh, you know, backed up in front of them a little bit, didn't bump into them, kind of stood off in their peripheral vision. Because I know that when, when they go, they have 
it was a very little bit of time so to find a type of person I was looking for. So they go, he goes to me, he goes, hey, you, come on. I'm like, oh. okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> what's this going to be? Um, <laughs> and it was very, very challenging. So um, what it was was they had us do specific things in mind. So um, I was pulled aside with another actor, and we were tasked to put the, uh, the war paint on each other, mm-hmm. which is like a big – chalky kind of, uh, not, well, not chalky, like oily kind of crayon. So, you know, you know, the, uh, the black, the, the brown, the green, yeah, uh, right. stripes, Some camouflage stuff, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, um, they said, uh, so they're, re- they're recording all of us doing whatever. And they're recording over my shoulder of me putting this, uh, you know, the, the, the war paint on the guy. Mm-hmm. So, um, and then he was supposed to put it on me. So they got a good footage of, of that happening, but, so then it came time for him to put the makeup on me and they're like, Oh, we're not doing that. Oh, I was like, this is going to be my face. On the game. What do you mean you're not doing it? So, oh, um, and, and, and it's funny because the place is all muddy, right? And Spielberg comes over and he's dressed perfectly clean. He's wearing white shoes in the mud. And I swear he didn't get any mud on his shoes because it's Steven Spielberg and you don't mess up anything that he does. <laughs> And he's wearing he's wearing a nice fancy scarf, and uh, just like you know, he sticks out like a, a, a for lack of a better analogy, a sore thumb, right. you know. And um, so they said they, they said to me, they go, "Come here, we're going to have you do something special. We're going to have you put your own makeup on the old the war paint. You're going to be holding this mirror, and then um, so we're going to have you sit over here, and it's going to be just you." Mm-hmm. So. Oh. Um, so they're setting that up. They've had like a uh, wall of sandbags for me to sit on. And then they're like, no, no, the height is, is just, there's an issue here. We're not really good. I was like, I'll do whatever you want. I'll do whatever you want. I'll cut my I, legs I, off. I, I got down in front of the wall and I was squatting down, pretending I was sitting on something. And it was the most uncomfortable feeling. I was like, is this good? Is this good? They're like, you know, don't walk away from me. Yeah. And then uh-huh. they're like, oh, no, no, it's okay. And they adjusted the levels or whatever so I could do it. So it was me. It was the, it was the cameraman. It was the assistant director of Spielberg. And that was it. Man, so, that is so yeah, cool. And, and the background people, they're all like looking at me, and I'm like, I'm just like, and it was very difficult, mind you, because they had they had me hold the mirror with my left hand and use my right hand to do the to use the uh, oil makeup stick, uh, camera or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm 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 reaching across with my right hand to the top left corner of my my head, and I'm going down like I'm just it's it's so awkward. And the camera and the cameraman is over my shoulder, and I can't even see myself in the mirror because he has to see me in the mirror. Right? Yeah, and he can't and be like, in the mirror. I'm like, don't right? screw this up. And it's like, I got, I got it. Okay, angle the mirror this way. Angle, do this, do that. And like, and then like, so I, I did it. And Spielberg, Spielberg said, "Good job." And that was it. Nice. And I'm like, oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so Man. naturally, I called my my very very supportive wife, and you know, I was like, guess what just happened? I'm like, I, I didn't get a speaker role, but I worked with Spielberg one on one, and he, he said I did a good job. <laughs> wow, man. It, yeah. I mean, I, and, and it's just funny because you know you see stuff in in in, in uh, movies and TV, and you think it's so easy. The littlest thing could be so hard. Right, yeah. Given, given the circumstances, or you don't even really know what's going on because they make it look natural on mm-hmm. the screen. Dave, so, how, how, that how, was that. I have to ask you, how do you stay cool in front of Steven Spielberg? You just do, right? That's why you're an actor. You don't look at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> man. Dude, that's, I guess that's really it. <laughs> that is, yeah, man. That is fair. That's what a story. What a great story. Yeah, what? and it was funny because when I first saw him, I thought of his appearance on, on um, Animaniacs. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you know, because like I said, like he was just looked all perfect and everything. <laughs> and the setting was definitely not perfect. So yeah, he was like right. drawn up. Man. <laughs> and he was, very, he was very calm and cool. and was just, you know, one of the guys. Oh, wow. That's cool to hear. That's yeah. very nice to hear. How about um, Scorsese's The Irishman? You worked on that project. Yeah, that was something I just wanted to do. That was during my time at uh, the New York Film Academy. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, anytime you have an opportunity to be on set with those guys, which, you know, which was uh, De Niro and Pesci and uh, Bacino. Bacino, oh. I was on set for two of his movies and never saw him. He was never on, did a scene with him or anything. But mm. um, I figured, you know, I just wanted to do it, you know. Yeah, sure. and, experience. And it, it was great to see uh, them as in, in person. 
because they're they're the cream of the crop, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I I, and I've worked. You know, I've been on set with the cream of the crop people, but the more you see, you know, just the more you feel like one of them. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And since I was being taught so well uh, at, at the film academy, I had so much confidence. You know, I just I just sat there and I saw De Niro uh, walk away from the where they were filming. And he, he sat down and he put his back up against the wall and he put his head back and he was just looking up and, you know, we were facing this, you know, each other. And I'm just like, I could go right up to you and I could do lines. Let's go right now. You know, I mean, it didn't happen because <laughs> I, I didn't get yeah, the chance. Right. But just and, and just to see uh, him and Pesci and Scorsese, and Scorsese is really short, really Ooh. short. Wow. <laughs> Which could be why he makes powerful movies, big, tall, powerful yeah, movies, right, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it, it must be, um, I know with, with, um, you know, the, the parts that you had in the projects that we were just t- talking about, do they tell, um, background actors to kind of stay away from the big stars or is that just understood? You don't even have to be told that. Uh, that is always the rule on set. Yeah. But you get a feel for the set when you're, when you're on it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and it's funny because, uh, you mentioned, uh, Gotham. Yeah, and that that set was like a family. Yeah, let's it talk was, about that. It right was now. so cool. Yeah, why don't we go right to Gotham? Yeah, so uh, my friend, uh, some guy uh, Solomon Shertok, I believe that's his name. Yeah, something like <laughs> yeah, I think I've yeah, heard the name. Know, <laughs> that guy. Um, he, uh, you know, he and I would go to go to the conventions and you know meet, meet these celebrities. And he was like, you know, Dave, you know, you want to talk to these people? Listen, you're going to be doing Gotham. You should go up to these people so they become familiar with you and. You know, and it helps, and it it, it definitely helps. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, so I'm on Goth- I'm set of Gotham, and uh, well, actually, I'm in holding at this point. You know, which is where they have the, the food services, and they, they have the wardrobe and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, at this point, I met uh, Ben McKenzie uh, twice, mm. and so he he's standing in the hallway by the elevator, and I go over there, and he's talking to somebody. He's facing me, so I'm standing behind the person he's talking to. And he looks at me, he acknowledges me with a head nod. And then, uh, you know, kind of like a one, one second thing. And then he's talking, you know, finishes talking to the, the you know, person he's talking to. The guy, the guy walks away and he goes, hey, he's, I was so happy to see that you made it. And he goes, you know, we started talking for a little while. And he's like, you know, tell your, your wife, that, you know, I said hello and stuff. It was just a really great conversation. Mm-hmm. So and then, you know, we're on set and then I take, you know, we're on a break and they have, they have a uh, Italian ice truck come up, and every it's like nobody's even in the locker room. They had tents, but they, you know, the um, you know, the characters, you know, the main people, they they just walk around and just you know, up, you go to a Italian ice uh, truck. They don't have anybody bring it to them. So um, uh, I see uh, Drew Powell, who played Butch, who was uh, Penguin's right hand man, um, mm-hmm. and, and I tap him on the shoulder, and I and he, and he turns around, and he goes hey, and he gives me like the biggest <laughs> hug, and it's just like oh, you know, just like talking, like we've known each other our whole lives. <laughs> Oh, that is you so know, and cool. everybody was so nice, you yeah. know, and, um, you know, and then between takes, you know, I saw Penguin, uh, like, I, I know when to talk to people, when not to, um, he had his head down, he's one, his, his mouth is moving, he's not saying anything out loud, he's, you know, you could tell he was going over his lines, mm-hmm. so when I met him at a convention later on, I said, I figured you're going over your lines, and I didn't want to bother you. He goes, I appreciate that so much, man. Thank you. Mm-hmm. He goes, I have a lot of lines on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I guess you just have to read the room pretty much, right, when you're on set. Uh, so oh, what, what was that? I, I guess you kind of like have to read the room when you're on oh, set. Oh, yeah, you know, for sure. What yeah. to say, when to say, when to back off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. It, and like, it was funny because they had so many different directors on that show. Mm-hmm. And at one, at one, on one of the days, Penguin and uh, Butch walked away to do something, whatever. And the director was yelling at them like he was one of us. <laughs> like, get back to the set. It's hot, guys. Get back to the set. I'm like, wow, okay. Wow. <laughs> yes. I, you yeah, know. I, I guess the director is, is the boss, huh? There's no doubt yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with the big, even with the big shots. Although I, I suppose Scorsese gives uh, De Niro and Pacino a little leverage, I would imagine. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, probably. So listen, um, I mean, obviously Gotham's not the only TV thing you've worked on. How about Quantico? Oh, Quantico. That was that was something. Let me start from the very beginning of Quantico. Mm-hmm. This, I was non-union, and I get to the set, and I'm the, literally the first one there. I turn on the lights. I open the door. <laughs> I'm the first one there. And 
And, you know, so I'm in holding and everybody shows up and they have wardrobe. They, they put me in this hideous sweater. It was hideous. Absolutely, uh-huh. extremely ugly. <laughs> it looked like a bunch of Twizzlers wrapped together all over the, all over the thing. And then, um, so that was the first time I was never used. It was, I, might, I think I might have been brought to set and then mm-hmm. brought back. And then I was just, it was just crazy. So we go to check out. And you have to bring the voucher up to the person behind the, uh, the table. They sign you out. And I'm like, listen, I know this isn't your fault, but I, I wasn't used. I was like, this doesn't sit well with me, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, I made friends with, with people in the waiting room. That's what I like to do. You never know who can help you. Yeah. And uh, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but, you know, but I, I became friends with somebody there who, who was in the union, and she felt bad for me because she just started, and I've been doing it for years. It took me um, – well, I'll get to that in a second. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so yeah. So the next thing I know, I'm a uh, recurring uh, uh, featured background person on the show, and they and they used me for about five months. Very cool. Yeah. So it was great because it was like a my life and for, be- during that time. And it's because you opened your mouth. You know what I, I mean? I like to think so because I did see the same guy again. Mm-hmm. Uh, he never admitted to it. But it didn't matter. I got, I, got, I got in. And I like to think it was because I said something. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, I, I just want to inject something here. I forget yes. who it was, Dave. Uh, I forget if I read it or saw it on TV. But an actor said, um, if you're thinking of saying something to somebody, you know, if it's appropriate, don't hold back. Just say it because you don't know whatever little thing might lead to something else. Have yeah. you found that? Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, that's, I think that goes in life. You know, if you, if you hold back and think, should I say something? Well, if it's appropriate, don't even think twice because you never know what it could lead to. Right, right. Or, yeah. or people can, could continue to walk all over you. Yes. And there's that aspect of it yeah, also. Very good point. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so Quantico, uh, so the person I became friends with, uh, her name is, is Janet Cho, and you know she also was uh, oh, okay. featured um, featured background with me the whole time, and so was this, uh, this one other guy who I worked with uh, doing something else. That's another story. Um, <laughs> but uh, so so I became I became cool with uh, you know the the big uh, the big names on the show. Not all of them, but most of them. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna you know, try to bash people, but uh, I got to see how the other side of Hollywood could be. And, you know, but it was just funny because it was just like a daily thing to me. I became numb to the fact that this is ABC or CBS or NBC or, you know, the big times or whatever. Right. And, you know, there were, there were, there was media coming in to interview people and it just it didn't even, you know, it's just like, okay, it's my daily life, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. But the, uh, um, so, yeah. so then it became a point to where I had to um, either join the union or I got kicked off the show. Yeah, I would get kicked off. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll join the union. (laughs) Yeah, gee, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, but the part that stunk about it was I had to join the union right before the the wages were going up. Like literally like like a couple days before it was going up. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Come on. You know, because because payments are due uh, in May and Mm -hmm. in November. And it was like November. So I was like, great, I got to pay the dues on top of paying, you know, to to get in. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Well, um, rains and pours. <laughs> so I did. I did that, and then um, I actually um, I got an audition from my management, who I didn't have at the time. Um, I actually got that from uh, another background person on an, on another show, and um, thank God for him because he's he was like, "Oh, I got an audition for Gotham." He's like, "But it's only one line." I'm like, "Whoa, one line? I'll tell you. <laughs> Where, where's your management, man? It's gold." <laughs> And so, so he's like, oh, dream, dream, dream maker talent. He goes, you should definitely reach out to them. And, you know, like, so I did. And I, I sent him audition tapes. I did um, Hannibal. Um, wow. And I did, you know, the whole, Clar- the whole Clarice thing. Um, yeah. When he's, when he's just doing that whole creepy speech to her. And I did uh, Tom Hanks from Saving by Ryan. You know what you look like to me with your good bag and your cheap shoes. You look like a rube. A well-scrubbed, hustling rube with a little taste. 
good nutritionist giving you bones and left. But you're not more than one generation away from poor white trash. Is that right, Agent Starling? And this accent that you're trying to shed, purely West Virginia. What does your father do, dear? Is he a coal miner? Does he stink of the lamp? And oh, how quickly those boys found you. All those tedious and sticky fumblings in the backseat of cars, while all you could do was dream of getting out, getting anywhere, getting all the way to the FBI. Mike, what's the pull on me up to? 300? Is that it? 300. I'm a school teacher. I teach English composition in this little town called Adderley, Pennsylvania. For the past 11 years, I was at Thomas Alva Edison High School. In the springtime, I was a baseball coach. Back home, when I tell people what I do for a living, they think, well, now that figures. But over here, I'm a big, big mystery. I guess I've changed some. Sometimes I wonder if I've changed so much, my wife will even recognize me whenever it is I get back to her. And how will I ever be able to tell her about days like today? Ah, uh, Ryan. I know nothing about Ryan. I don't care. The man means nothing to me. He's just a name. But if, you know, if going to Ramel and finding him so he can come home, if that earns me the right to get back to my wife, then that's my mission. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So, so I, I got in, they, they accepted me, and uh, it, it took me eight years to get in the union. It took me nine to get uh, representation, but I, wow. I, I kept going. So, how, how, I mean, this is kind of a rhetorical question, but how do you not give up? <laughs> you don't go... uh, because, it, because if it's in you, it's in you. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, so I'm like, I really can't give up because it's just bugging me, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I got to keep going. Yeah. And plus, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to sound conceited or anything, but I, I knew I was good at it. I yeah. know when I'm not good at stuff, but I know when I'm good mm -hmm. at stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They, <laughs> um, so, um, they, so going back to Quantico, so yeah. my management was, uh, was, you know, they were and they still are. They're great. They're always on top of everything. They said, we have an audition for you. They sent me the slide. They sent me everything I need to I need right away. So they said to me, we have an audition for you for Quantico. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, like, it's tomorrow. I'm like, okay, cool. I got, I got the uh, breakdown email. So I'm like, okay, where's the script? Okay, uh, maybe I'll wait till later. And then, like, I never <laughs> heard from them. So the day of my audition, they I contacted, oh, we're sorry, we, we thought you sent it to you. you know, we, and then, so they sent it to me, and I realized that I'm going to be auditioning as an Irish guy. So I'm like, and I'm about to leave to go to the audition. So I'm like, on the way, I'm trying to get an Irish accent. <laughs> Oh my and I'm gosh. Like, and then I, I forgot to I forgot to do what I always do, which is shave. I forgot to <laughs> put my Irish looking clothes on. So I, I'm like grungy and I'm like, you know, there's no way I'm gonna get this because I've already been on the show for five months. There's no way they're gonna give me a different role. This, this is not happening. But I always fill my uh, fulfill my audition obligations because I don't wanna not have another one for my management. Yeah. So I went and I'm sitting and I'm like I may or may not have an Irish accent. I don't even know. <laughs> I'm calling. I'm calling my my friends, uh, Fisher Campbell family, who I'll mention again later, and, and and they're Irish and they're trying to help me. And I'm just like, does that sound good? Like, oh, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> like the life so, of an actor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm in the break room, sitting between people who are dressed pretty much the way I want to dress. I don't know. They might have been wearing my shirt from home, which is why I couldn't find it. I don't know. <laughs> and then the, the guy in front of me. He's in the, you know, he's in the room. He's doing the line over and over and over and over. So 
Like, so I go in there, I do it once. They're like, okay, thanks. Well, well but first they were like, do you have an Irish accent? I'm like, well, I've been working on it. They're like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I do my line once. They're like, thank you. Okay. So I leave, grab my stuff, and I'm walking by the room, and I hear the next guy's doing the line several times. Mm-hmm. And yet, yet I wind up getting the role. <laughs> wow. One shot and, you got. And, and I, I found out when uh, I was at the New York Film Academy, and – um, so my man, I was in class and my management uh, was calling me and I'm like, well, oh, forget class. I'm, I'm going down the hallway. And, <laughs> and one of my uh, good buddies, uh, his name is Kyle, was uh, one of my classmates. He was he was in the hallway when I found out, like I dropped out of my knees. I'm like, I'm going back to Quantico. <laughs> <laughs> I told my wife and I'm like, I'm going back to Quantico. She was like, no way. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You know, it was it was amazing. Mm. Hey, Dave, what what's your wife's name? Her name is Megan. Megan. Okay. Yes. Because you mentioned it a couple of times. Good yeah. job, Megan. Yeah. <laughs> um. So man. Oh, oh, oh. So okay. So then, then they scheduled the table read with the cast, and I'm so like the table read was during one of my my uh, my classes that. I had with the uh, president of the program, the one year for uh, active for film program. I don't want to say his name, but <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I go up to him ahead of time and I, this is why I don't want to say his name, but right. you know, mm-hmm. I said to him, I said, I, I mentioned that I got the role and I said, but the, the table read is, is during your class tomorrow. And he goes, I can't tell you what to do, but I know what I would do. And I said, okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so, Jeez. so I go to the studio, uh, like say. he, like he told me to do, but not to do, you know, right. kind of thing. Yeah. and I get there early. So I said, you know what? And let me, let me, uh, go across the street, sit on the bench and have my lunch. As I'm doing that, one of the co-producers of my favorite television show walks out and he, and I'm like, I'm doing it. Like, I, I'm, I'm talking to Salma. I'm like, Salma, I got to go. I'll tell you later. Bye. <laughs> it was uh, Seinfeld's Larry David. Are you kidding me? Holy yeah, I was smokes. Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm usually, you know, you know, celebrity great, whatever. But I'm like, this guy. I'm like, hey, I got to get a picture with this guy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, so he's, he's, he's walking fast. I don't think he sees me, but I think he just walks fast in general. Mm-hmm. And um, so he goes to uh, the train to... You know, I guess I don't, I don't remember what he did, but he had to stop for a second. I was like, I have my phone ready for a picture. And I asked him for a picture. He was very nice. But he goes, no, uh, you know, okay, because he saw I was ready. Right. And then he just took a picture real fast. And, you know, and then later on, wow. I'm, um, I'm in the uh, main lobby of the uh, studio talking to the a guy at the front desk. And Larry David walks behind him and goes, yeah, that, that's Larry David. He's working here today. <laughs> like, uh, and then when I was leaving, I was leaving. He walks out, like you know, down the street, and then some girl passes by him. And she says, "He goes, is that?" I'm like, "Yep, that's him." <laughs> <laughs> Dave, that is a Seinfeld episode. What you just told us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. I very cool. It. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. So I want. I, I have so many on this list. Um, how about Army of the Dead? Army of the Dead. That was uh, that was really cool. Uh, I played uh, a zombie. Mm-hmm. So uh, oh wow! That, that... I always want I always want to do that, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Like, some of these things I do just for fun, you know, mm-hmm. uh, just to be around certain people or just whatever. Mm-hmm. And I spent hours in a makeup chair for days on end. Talked to some of the most fascinating people. One of the makeup guys uh, did uh, work for um, the Adams Family. And they're just telling me all these stories and uh-huh. stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, and you guys are doing my makeup now. This is awesome. Right, man. <laughs> you know, and um, so um, so I had, a, I had to audition for, like, they had different levels of zombies. Excuse me. So they auditioned people. Uh, they, had to, they had to do all this, like, uh, all these uh, athletic tasks and stuff like that. And um, at one point, they, they brought people so we're like running, we're doing all this stuff. Blah, 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 blah. They're like, okay, so now we're going to go in the hallway. And there's Zack Snyder's there, and, and they're all, you know, taking notes, I guess. And they're all, they're all running down this this hallway in like a, I forget where it was, but it was a huge hall. We're just running back and forth. Back. And they're like, yeah, we still can't decide. <laughs> so we got to go back to another room. <laughs> running around like, blah, blah, like, you know, like blah. back is forward, arms are out, hands are. Just, right. Like, okay, yeah, you're alpha, you're this, you're that. And, 
Um, anyway, uh, Dave Batista was very nice. Everybody was really nice. It yeah, was, it was super cool. You know, that's that's really nice to hear that. Like Dave Batista's, I mean, that's that's a name guy. That they're, you know, many of them are nice, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I find especially the horror people are nice. They're like yeah. the nicest people in the world. Well, I met the biggest yeah. names in horror, and it was like, wow, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, you mentioned before. Um, What's that guy's name? Solomon Church? Okay, well, anyway, no. Yeah, how, how you yeah. and he go to the um, horror conventions. I go to the chill conventions as well. And yes. don't you find that so many of the actors and actresses in the field of horror are really, really cool people? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yeah, uh, Tyler Maine, who played uh, Michael Myers in, in the Rob Zombie Halloween movies, mm-hmm. he, he was so nice. I mean, you know, I would just... I would have left like my kid with him. Yeah, you know, right. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. we're standing there talking, and there's a camera person waiting to take a picture, and, and we're just talking and talking. They're like, okay, you know, <laughs> they're actors. Was, Tony Todd, Robert Eng- Robert Englund did a video for my friend who couldn't make it to see him, and he went all Freddy mode. And uh, uh, how cool just is that? Tony Todd, I, I can go on and on about him, and just a lot of them. And mm. uh, I met the uh, the voice of Scream. Roger L. Jackson. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just... Uh, <laughs> wow. Your name, original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, just, yeah, yeah, everybody, pretty yeah. much. Uh, the the, um, the main actor of my favorite horror movie, uh, Josh Stewart. Uh, the movie's a collector. I absolutely love that movie. Really? And that's your favorite horror, huh? And that's a, my favorite horror, yep. You're a horror aficionado. Wow, okay. Yeah. My, my favorite, not to get on your territory my favorite is is still texas chainsaw massacre yes the 74 yes, that's, that's one of my other favorites yeah i like the jessica beale one yeah what yeah. about you i like the 74 one uh, jessica beale one was was great but you know i met like gonna hansen and a few yeah, of the others too, yep. from there so but i i you know what i'm going back and forth Either Fine. either TCM or The Exorcist. I can't decide which is my favorite. Oh, Linda anyway, Blair. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Did Solomon tell you about when I met Linda Blair? No. Sort of? No, tell us. Oh, dear God. So I'm dressed <laughs> as my character that we'll mention later. Yep. And Bronson Pinchow is sitting at a table next to her table. And uh, I'm just I'm just whatever. Solomon wants to meet him. I'm just mind my own business kind of thing. Um, I look over at her, I look away, just whatever. And then Bronson Pinchow calls me over, he takes pictures with me and of me, he goes, yeah, this is what the convention's all about. And Solomon says to me, you know, Linda Blair, you know, she's afraid of you. I'm like, <laughs> it's like she left when you got closer. I'm like, oh. Her head turns all the way around and she's afraid of me. I'm exactly. Just, you know, she's, hanging she's, out. She spits and pea then, soup and she's afraid of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and I didn't believe him at all. Just, I mean, you know, because it could have just been a coincidence, you know? Yeah, I had to get so, up for stuff. So, at the end of the convention, um, Solomon, I guess, wanted to use the bathroom or something. And, you know, the ta- people were t- uh, clearing the tables out. So, she's standing there talking to a couple of people, like, whatever. She's, she's signing. There was just me and, like, one other guy. I like, really got one her autograph. And I, I was just minding my own business. She signs for him and, and runs away from me. She bolted. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay. He's just telling the truth. <laughs> you scared Linda Blair. Now, that yes. I mean, the, the name of the character is Trevor. We'll talk about later. But Trevor scared Linda Blair. How about that? That's I'm not even bragging. I'm just telling her I wasn't even trying. I wasn't even <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, okay. I you still, done with the bathroom yet? <laughs> I still think it should be on your resume, Dave. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, now, listen. There's um, a couple others here. Deadly Devotion. Yes, what, what, tell that us. was super cool. That um, so that's a uh, murder reenactment dramatization on the ID channel, and at the time I had no representation. And I, as you like you said before, I'm big into horror, mm-hmm. and I was always wanted to play a killer on TV. Yeah, I think most because, people would like to, really. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, that's not something I would do in real life. So sure. to me, that's what makes acting amazing. Mm-hmm. You can get away with stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, hundred percent, see what you're saying. Yeah, you know, and and uh, to do to do the opposite of what you do in, in real life, no matter what it is, it can be fun. Mm-hmm. You know, you're out of your element, whatever. Um, so I get a call saying that they want me to be their killer, and this is when I'm at work at my rinky dink job at a liquor store, which was in a cage inside of BJ's wholesale. They were like rats in the cage, especially when there's nothing to do. Now there's a um, life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so they said they wanted me to, to be the killer. So I, 
I had to talk to my boss. And I'm just like, you know, they, they want me for this day. And he goes, oh, we'll see. You know, I'm like, what do you mean we'll see? I'm like, what am I doing? This is my dream. Right. You know? mm-hmm. And I was able to switch with somebody, so I got off. But from that point forward, I'm like, I'm, I'm not working during the day anymore. I want to work overnights. I don't want to have permission. Because yeah. that's when all the auditions take place. I just want to go to my auditions. If I get there while I take off from work. You know? Right. So the rats in the cage will have to bother somebody else, right? (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Um, So, so I get the role and um, I, uh, the first thing they had me do is kill somebody. Mm -hmm. And, and it was a perfect job. You know, there was just one take. They were so thrilled. So, uh, you know, the guy I was killing, like we all did a great job. Not saying just me, just, it was just, Mm -hmm. everything was perfect. And, you know, I, I shoot the guy, and he falls down. Everything's perfect. My gun fired because they rigged it. Mm-hmm. Um, so then so then I'm in, I'm in the break room, and then the guy shows up, and I'm eating. I'm just like, you know, I see the back of his head. There's, like, there's red in, in his hair. I'm like, okay, let me, let me be nice and go up to him. I'm like, dude, you have red stuff in your hair. I'm like, oh, that's right. That's because I shot you in the back of the head. <laughs> because at the time, they didn't have the blood yet. Right. So I was like... Okay, well, I'm just going to continue to eat my food and walk this way, you know. <laughs> and then, and then we filmed the rest of the scenes, which was really funny. Uh, so it was called, uh, the episode was called Murderous Mormons. Mm-hmm. So we're all family, and it's a family that just implodes. So, I mean, we're doing all these things together. You know, he's sitting at the, at the table eating pizza. We're all in the kitchen. I'm walking behind him, which is kind of creepy to think about it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, um, so, and then one of the, uh, actresses, well, so there was, we were doing like, uh, I don't want to say Bible study, but whatever, whatever they study, whatever books they use, mm-hmm. um, you know, they, they give us all prop books and stuff like that, except for one of the actresses had the book about our lives. So during the break, she was telling us about our lives. Wow. I never found out what happened to my character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everything else was fascinating. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah. So that was it. So then, so there comes time to watch it with my parents. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, my dad is religious. You know, they don't really like the violence or anything, right? Mm-hmm. So he tells his other, he tells his friends to watch me on the other TV shows that I was just background for. And I said, no, dad, I have a role in this, you know, but he didn't tell anybody <laughs> for whatever reason, <laughs> yeah. right? So the four of us are downstairs, my, me, my parents, and my, my wife, we're watching the show. And, uh, I, you know, the scene pops up to where I, where I, I killed a person. And I told my parents ahead of time. I told them, you know. So my dad's my dad's sitting there. He goes, "You killed that person." I'm like, "Yeah." He just gets up and goes upstairs. Oh. <laughs> as if I betrayed him in real life. Right. As like, he's going upstairs, not really, Dad. I was acting. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't I guess that, that something? Did a good job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess you got the reaction from your dad. You did a great job. Yeah, wow. yeah, but I was like, why don't you tell anybody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Maybe that's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, I understand that um, your work on Blue Bloods, that holds a special place in your career. Yes. Please, can you tell us you know, what that's um, about? Well, Blue Blood? I love the show, by the way. I love Blue Bloods. Yeah, my parents too. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a major hit. Um, so I did, I did uh, two days on that. One day... Um, which is a regular whatever. You know, I, I got to meet Donnie Wahlberg. He came up to me, started talking to me. He was, was extremely nice. Oh, cool. Um, That's great to hear. And I was like, I, I, I want to, you know, what about Tom Selleck? You know, so I got brought in for another day. Uh, and I was with, with Tom Selleck. So um, we were all in the room. And the, the scene was that he calls a bunch of recruits in from, like, I guess, like the day off or whatever, because we're all in normal clothes. And he wants to, like, rip us a new one. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. So... Um, so, so we're filled up, you know, the room is filled up all background people, including me. And, uh, you know, so my, I'm, I'm tall, so I'm blocking the camera. <laughs> so they're like, oh. you, they sent me to the holding room. I'm like, oh, great. Oh man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'm not going to be used. So then they, then they, they, while I'm in there, they said, here, we need you to sign this. Cause we're bumping everybody up to speaking roles. Wow. So, which, which they didn't have to do. Because when everybody speak, all the backgrounds speak at the same time, um, they, it's, uh, it's, just, it's considered non-speaking. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm-hmm. I guess because you're drowned out or whatever. So, yeah. so I, signed, I signed a contract. 
and it was for hundreds of dollars. It was a lot of money, especially because yeah. I'm still getting residuals from it. Wow. Um, so, you know, I go and I do the scene. It was like six hours, and I, I, got, I got a lot of money from it. Mm. And the reason why it holds a close, you know, the reason why it's so special to me is because um, it was one of the anniversaries of the death of my grandmother on my mom's side. And she oh. was a very big supporter of me. Oh, see that? She was yeah. watching over you. And there's also other strange occurrences. I don't know if you want to speak about them now Absolutely. or later. No, let's do it now if, 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 if you're good with it. Sure. So the first ever project I did was the movie Just Right, which with, with uh, Common and Queen Latifah. Mm-hmm. And um, I was so excited. That was background. I was a, a sports fan. Uh, it was, it was, uh, it's a basketball movie. So it, it takes place, you know, at the Eyes Eye Center. So we're sitting all around. They keep moving us. They didn't have enough people to fill the state. And they move us all around. Da, da, da. So there's mega stars, mega movie stars, like Paula Patton, uh, Felicia uh, Rashad from the uh, the Cosby Show, sure. and yeah. Common, Queen Latifah, and, da, da, da. And, and this NBA also, this NBA also. Da, da. I go home, and I'm, ca- I'm telling everybody, anybody that will listen to me. And, <laughs> you know, I, I call my grandma. I'm like, so excited, so excited, so excited. And uh, she she goes, I'm, I'm going to go see it in the theaters when it comes out. We'll go together. We'll go see it. Uh, and this this was when she was 89 years old. Oh. And she, um, well, this, this, you know, a little, this is very sensitive. Uh, but uh, she wants to live until to, uh, at least 90. She wants to make it to 90. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and around that time, we found out she had cancer. Mm. So they said that she had a bunch of months to live. And it turned out to be like a month. So, uh, oh, goodness. So when the movie, the movie was due to be released, whatever day it was, uh, in January, I don't even know, but there was a major problem. So the movie got delayed and it got released on her 90th birthday. Holy smoke. So I went to the theater by myself, never did that before, had her prayer card with me and watched the movie. Oh. And let me tell you, I'm on the screen seven times, mm-hmm. seven, eight, nine, whatever. And one of the shots is a close up of me and the guy next to me, just the two of us. And it's not even fast. It's just a few seconds on the screen. You, right. you can't miss me. Mm-hmm. Um, extremely as, as featured as you can get without my head coming through the screen. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, so, and, and also with well, the DVD came out on my uncle's birthday, who was a big supporter of me, who's, who has since passed, unfortunately. So wow. I thought that was crazy. Wow. Um, and it's, it's and, a, I'll, mm. and, and there's another couple, two more strange occurrences that I'll get to and then, and then get back to just right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so, you know, so my wife, my wife and I got a second dog. I didn't want any dogs. We have two. <laughs> so obviously she won that. Um, so she's like, you can, you can name, you can name this one. So I named the dog Casey after Casey Becker from uh, Drew Barrymore's character in Scream, the iconic yeah. opening oh, scene. Oh, what? A, yes. Mm-hmm. So and then good you know, job, by the way. Good, good name. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? I said good job with the name. Oh, thank you, thank you. Because <laughs> I want to. I was like, you know, I just it's just whatever. I just like yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was like, wait a minute. You know, Drew Barrymore. I was like, when I was a child, before I even knew what acting was, my grandma on my, my mom's side used to say that I was acting like John Barrymore. <laughs> oh, oh my good. Everything is so tied together here. Yeah, so now I'm like, you know, now I can't give up because right. my dog is always with me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, and this other one was strange too. Um so just my my birthday just passed a few days ago. Happy birthday. Thank you. And um so I'm putting together the movie that we're going to talk about later. Mm-hmm. And I had I had a pretty decent sized blow because I lost a location. And then mm-hmm. when, when that happens to uh, a production manager, you feel like everything's collapsing. So I was, I was feeling upset. And then, so my, uh, my, my God, my God kids and their family come over uh, for my birthday. Right. So then we're walking out of the main building or the main door of the apartment building. And I was like, and I hear music playing. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Somebody was blasting. The song "I Got the Keys," which is DJ Khaled featuring Jay Z and Future, I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" <laughs> and then and they're like, "What? What?" I'm like, "I'm in that music video." Oh my god! 
gosh. Yeah, and that was years. This is, this is freak. This is freaky, Dave. Yeah, I'm like that's you know this is my birthday. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling upset. What are the odds somebody's going to play this song? There's only yeah. one song playing. Holy smokes! And it's playing next to the stairs where I'm walking. And, and in the music video before, well, of course, I got cut out of most of my stuff. But one of the things I did was I walked Jay Z out of the building. <laughs> And that that was funny. I, I get I, I, so. But if I get back to just right, mm-hmm. um, so they, they they brought me in as uh, a principal person, which means you have the speaking roles, or in the music video, you're a feature, you're something. You're they they, they handpicked you to be there. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm driving. This is Queens in Queens at the Queens uh, Correctional Facility, which for some reason I was there multiple times. I don't know if that's a sign, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Um, so I wound up taking a side road because in New York, you know, the one way system, I did, you know, all these signs. I'm like, oh, God. So I'm freaking out. I take a side road and my car gets tarred. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah. But so I'm like, this, this day is just terrible. You know, so I get I get there and, um, you know, Jay-Z is really nice to me. Really great time. And, uh, you know, so I I'm in the. Um, uh, the, the wardrobe room, and, and I don't know if you know who the rapper Ti is. He's also uh, an actor, and mm-hmm. um, so I, you know, was that. I, I'm, I'm, was he on uh, Law and Order? I don't know, like, but I I definitely know who he is. But yes, possibly he's definitely yeah. in American Gangster. Mm-hmm. He, he yep. plays uh, Denzel Washington's uh, family member, okay, like maybe his nephew or something. Now, anyway, mm-hmm. so so then later on in the video. I'm walking Jay-Z out of the building, and nobody tells me that all these other huge names in hip-hop are there. They're all in the parking lot, leaning up against, like, a nice Rolls Royce, and all waiting for them to come out. I'm like, hello. Wow. <laughs> hi, hi, everybody from my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So that was cool. That was that's um, very cool, man. Yeah, and then, and then so getting back to just right, mm-hmm. so, okay, so you have all these different directors, and they have a background director. And I'm just like, you know, and, they, and they're giving out phone fingers and they're like, oh, okay, this row do this, this row do that, this row do the same thing that the first row did, and this row do the same thing the second row. I'm like, what is, is this like a stoic video game or something? This is stupid. <laughs> this isn't real life. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I said to the guy next to me, I was like, let's, let's just do whatever the heck, heck we want to do. We know the story is let's react to what story's going to unfold. Mm-hmm. So we do that. And that's what got us on the big screen. Wow, you know, because I'm like, I'm like being real. I'm tapping on the show, pointing to this. We're like, you know, like, whoa, we're, we're humans, you know? Yeah, and it, go ahead. And I was going to say, and there again, like you mentioned before, you know, saying things, speaking up, right, or, yeah. or just doing the opposite without being uh, a jerk about it. Yeah, yeah, uh huh. And seeing if they'll correct you, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like the saying goes: it's easier to ask for forgiveness than it is for permission. Yeah, you know, very true. And so. So I was just shooting. The, I'm talking to this guy next to me for uh, three days, and we're just we're just goofing off, you know, being professional. Having a, uh, his name is uh, Mike Gelato. He's a uh, he's actually a famous chef, mm-hmm. and he's been on TV shows before, like Chopped and the Tyra Banks show, and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Was it a uh, restaurant uh, restoration? And so you know, so we kept in touch, and then he contacts me because. Uh, country music television contacted him to be on his show on their show uh his reality show called my big redneck vacation starring uh tom arnold and uh-huh. um hey, wow. sort of sort of starring tom arnold he wound up being a pop-up graphic but he's like you you <laughs> he goes you're a part of my team he goes you're you're a chef you're you're whatever and because everybody else was real <laughs> everybody else was really a waiter or chef i'm like it's just me <laughs> you know, that was a crazy time. I got pictures of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was just, you know, and you also forget that you're on reality television. Yeah. I got to see how that worked. They <laughs> had four ninja camera crews. So it just snuck up on you. And they're just, they're just trying to catch the real moments. Mm. It, you know, So reality TV is reality TV. I mean, I, you know, you hear things, oh, some of it's scripted and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So I guess maybe there's a little of everything in there in reality. TV. Yeah, well, I think they have like – it's like uh, guidelines or something. Like they have an idea for some of the shows Yeah, what's going to happen. Like, like I, an outline or whatever. I also did uh, Impractical Jokers. Love that uh, show. 
What was yeah, it? I, I was I was brought in for that. And this particular scene had to be set up ahead of time mm-hmm. because I was reacting to them being naked and they kind of, okay. you know, shouldn't be naked in public. You know? So, so, so yeah. t- tell me a little bit about it. Well, uh, that was the episode where one of the uh, Jokers loses, which obviously happens in every episode. Right. But the guys who didn't lose were naked in this guy's house. They're laying on his bed, laying on his couch, rubbing themselves <laughs> with his pillows and doing naked jumping jacks in the window, which is what I was watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Lovely. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was something. <laughs> I know, got a lot of pictures uh, sent to me of that. <laughs> you know what, Dave? I want to go back. I was thinking of this when you were talking about Blue Bloods and you were – the background uh, players were talking, you know, all at once. Yeah. When when we see that on TV, what are you saying? Are you just going blah, 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 like moving your mouth? Are you guys actually oh, saying things to yeah, each other? Yeah, or yeah. Yep. You're just making it's, noises and things? Yeah, but yeah. I mean, for that particular time, we, we were saying, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, sir. You know, oh, they yeah, needed, gotcha. They needed that. But yeah, yeah it, it's really what it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Now, let's go back um, to how you – you, you you alluded to some of these things, you know, since we've been talking, but how did you start out in the acting field? And are there any, like, acting teachers that stand out in your mind? And <sighs> Boy. How's well, that for a loaded question? <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, well, I, I was sleeping at my parents' house. I woke up, opened the door, walked in the room, and uh, there was my brother who lived in New York at the time with a film crew. Filming uh, Clive Unger's Madam X. Um, right. mm. They had a production meeting. And, uh, you know, Solomon was there. <laughs> That's how I met Solomon. <laughs> Solomon sure talk. Yeah, you know. I, I opened the bedroom door, walked out. That's how I met Solomon. <laughs> 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 it might sound creepy, you know, but yeah. You know. And you guys um, have been buddies ever since. Yes, yes. Uh, we became extremely close. He was actually uh, a part of my wedding. Mm-hmm. Um, Madam X is great, by the way. I'm sorry, what? Madam X is great, by the way. I, I oh, saw that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it really is. And one thing that is, uh, I would say, negative about having my brother do great work is <laughs> I don't know how much he actually bullies me. <laughs> I'm like, listen, I, 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 I watch films. I can tell you why yours is great. The mm-hmm. angles. The <laughs> angles. Brian? <laughs> Brian DeSico? You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're just saying that. I can hear him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and he actually, you know, and that's a, that was a time when I was, you know, you know, had the acting bug, and I'm just, we're sitting at the dinner table, and I'm just like, think, are you going to put me in this movie? Can I do something? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, so, he, so he threw me uh, a line. He threw your bone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I, I guess, well, that's the first project I ever spoke in. So, uh, have you worked I, with your brother besides, um, besides that? No, but let's get on the stick here, bro. But Come on. We will be because I'm announcing now that he is co-directing my upcoming movie. Oh, wow. You know what? Yeah. Let, let, let's, let's, let's keep the audience at, uh, you know, waiting and before for that. I forget he created the poster too. Very cool. Yeah. We're going to talk about that later, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, now, you mentioned my teachers. So yes. Solomon referred me to a, lady, a lovely lady named Caroline Thomas, mm-hmm. Total Theater Lab, New York. Uh, okay. So I'm like, I'm looking her up and I'm just like, but she taught James Gandolfini. <laughs> she taught David Duchovny. You're she in. Taught, 
Zoe Zeldana. Wow. She taught Laura Prepon. Holy smokes. Oh, my goodness. Talk about and a resume, what's, yeah. What's really funny is she's not the only person who I know who taught Laura Prepon. <laughs> you will never believe who taught Laura Prepon in high school. My Tell mother. me. Who? My mother. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Dave, this is some, like, my gosh, all these webs, these things that are interweaving in your life. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, like, how could I not pursue now, this? Now, what did your mom do in high school? Uh, she was a home economics and uh, interior design teacher. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because she was, she was always into the arts. Right. It's just, uh, you know, when she was growing up, it's, you were either a nurse or a teacher. Mm-hmm. So she found a way to incorporate what she wanted to do and, you know, be a teacher, Isn't you know, that... which I'm sure she wanted to do, too. Yeah, you know I, what I'm saying? I'm a retired teacher, Dave, and my wife is a nurse. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not something. Wow, it's all part of the web. <laughs> That's it, baby. <laughs> and and since then, since she, uh, she retired, she has gone on to uh, help with the uh, the stage productions, the plays at uh, mm-hmm. the Wachong Regional High School in New Jersey, and their plays are like Broadway. So she, she uh, incredible, yeah, the incredible sense. Um, but anyway, uh, going back to my teachers, I'll go back to my family later, but. Uh, so yeah, so Caroline Thomas. So she gives me um, a book. It was like it was a play. I can't remember which one it was, but uh, you know. So she's like, study this, study this. You know, like read this whole thing. And then so I I go back to her, and she was not happy with me. Oh, oh boy, huh. she 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 laid into me, and I'm and I'm happy she did. She did it in a professional way, but she did not hold back. You know, and I'm like. Wow, this is another part of acting. I didn't even know I yeah, had anything right? to do with it. Mm-hmm. She's like, has anybody ever told you that you might have like ADD or something? Because I think you do. And she's just like, you know, so so she took another. She's brilliant. She took an angle of how to help somebody with ADD. Mm. You know, she's like, now when you come back, you know, she's like, you're gonna this do this character. This character is you. Read up on this. Like I don't remember all the stuff because I went went to her a lot, mm-hmm. and she she was so amazing. And then she invited me to one of her classes. So I got to interact with other people. Mm-hmm. She went to one of my showcases. She went to uh, 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 like a film screening for uh, S- Solomon stuff. And she's just, and my brother's Clive Unger. And she's just um, outstanding. You know, did can't you speak highly enough about her? She helped Laura Prepon get on that 70s show. Do you Did's have ADD? Do you have uh, ADD? Shoot. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Dave. What? No, I was going to. Do you have ADD? <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> I, I was going to say, she, <laughs> she may have it, found I'm something. I'm talking to you. I mean, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's funny because I can't even concentrate on sleeping. I had to have something else going on for me to, to be able to fall asleep. Wow. <laughs> um, but anyway, you can see Caroline Thomas on E! True Hollywood's uh, Behind the Scenes for <laughs> uh, that 70s show. They interviewed her about uh, Laura Prepon. So wow. okay, very cool. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then also, so New York Film Academy. Yes. Oh, I'm like, first day, let me wear my Pennywise shirt. So everybody knows I'm a freak. I'm a freak among freaks. <laughs> I don't, I, in your element. I, I can't imagine many people like horror, just in uh-huh. general. So I go to my first class, and my teacher is Blanche Baker. Okay. Um, she is from 16 Candles. She oh, plays I, Jeannie, I, the drunk I, sister. I knew married. I knew the name. Yes, I knew I knew yeah, the she, name. Yeah, she's just in everything. She's, she mm-hmm. won um, an Emmy for, um, whatchamacallit, uh, the Holocaust movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, sorry, TV miniseries uh, with Meryl Streep and James Woods uh, uh-huh. from many, many years ago. So well decorated, right? And I was just like, wait a minute. I mean, I'm sitting in class. I'm like, she's in this horror movie. That mm-hmm. was so intense, I almost turned it off. Wow. Mm-hmm. She's a sweet lady of, like, maybe, I'd say, average height, maybe a little above, and she's just so, so nice. You know, a huge personality on the screen, uh, like a huge presence, but in, 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 in the classroom, just a teacher, nice, down to earth. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sitting there wearing my Pennywise shirt, <laughs> and she said that she was in uh, The Girl Next Door. I'm like, holy, whoa. And then I was like, wow, I saw that movie. It was intense. And she leans into me. She goes, how about the part with the torch? <laughs> and at that point, oh, I was like, I, I, I think Pennywise left my shirt at that point. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you win. <laughs> Isn't that something, man? Wow. 
Yeah, and she and she was extremely nice, extremely uh, hands on with uh, everybody. Cared about everybody. All the teachers at that school cared mm-hmm. about everybody. And um, she actually, it, she actually gave me a huge honor, and that was she allowed me to speak in front of the class about my experiences. Wow! Wow! Um, that is and, an honor. And because she was saying that, you know, maybe back, doing background work isn't the best thing, so. I came up with a list of why it is great and why it's not. Mm-hmm. So I did a whole speech on that. Um, so, and then she, uh, she put me in one of her movies that she was doing too. Wow. She, she had picked some students and I was lucky enough to be one of them. Do you remember and what I the movie was? Speaking and, and it was a you know, really good uh, scene. Which movie and, was it? Do you remember? So, yes. It's called, it's a short film. Uh, it's called make America safe again. It's uh-huh. about gun laws and how it's going to be in the future if we don't they, you know, tighten up the laws. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Sounds like um, an important film. And that went all around, you know, the country and out of the country, and like Italy and Greece and all that. And mm-hmm. one, it was nominated for ten awards and won three of them. And I think it's still going on. And some of them are maybe to be determined. Wow. Uh, but I was I was so honored, man. What a feather in your cap, really. Yeah. 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 And then, but it was funny because during uh, between like the takes. I got an audition, and it was the first time I ever got an audition for a, a character with a name, for like a Hollywood thing. I was like, <laughs> oh, my goodness, I'm, gonna, I'm auditioning to be Tim. <laughs> and then I went back inside and I was doing Blanche's movie, and I'm like, oh, God, I got along to Blanche's movie. I'm like, this. oh, my God. <laughs> so listen, Dave, if, if, if you ever do get another dog, maybe Tim should be the name. <laughs> that was your first name as an actor, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was, it's actually funny that you say that, and it, and it's a segue into something I was just thinking. Mm-hmm. So, um, there's this wonderful, wonderful group called Veterans in Film and uh, Entertainment. I think they changed it to uh, what is it? It's uh, Veterans in Media and Entertainment now, mm-hmm. and it's run by an actor and a stunt guy who has really great credits. Is uh, Ed Heavey. Um, Gotham and all this other great stuff and it's for the military veterans to help them get into the uh, industry so uh, they they had meetings they had Q&A's and, and fantastic stuff they they actually got me a massive audition and it was for uh, the TV show New Amsterdam oh sure yes, and my, yes. my, my audition was many scenes and my character was uh, his name uh, Benson Mm-hmm. Recurring and just a huge role, and my wife is like, "Okay, well, we'll name our next dog Benson." Uh, well, okay, it's a great name for a dog, but you know, only if I get the role, please. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll have to get rid of the dog then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So I didn't get the role, but man, I I did a fantastic job, and that, and that's when you know that's my advice. One of the one of the things I want to tell actors, I have a lot of advice from my own, myself and from people in the industry it's just you know that's the most important thing is to make yourself proud when you're auditioning mm-hmm. and, uh, and, because you you know if you did good or right. if you did bad you know who cares that everybody else thinks is you can't change what they think yeah. you could walk you could walk in the, in the room and it happens and right away as soon as they see you, you don't have the role because you're you're too short you're too this you're too that you know mm-hmm. and it's out of your control and, and I, w- I would imagine you would know better than I, Dave. But I would imagine you know if you don't get a role, there are still people in that room who remember you yes. for another role. Say, hey, you know what? We auditioned oh. this guy, and so that's that's I guess always you know that, like you that's, say, that's the goal too. Yeah, that's the goal. You're always auditioning for something else, even when you're auditioning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> um, and and it's really cool because I was right about to say that was the biggest audition of my life. But I can't say that because one of my teachers named uh, Victor Verhege, uh, who did uh, 20 episodes of Boardwalk Empire, he's worked with wow. Tom Hanks and Hugh Jackman. He's he's awesome. They, mm-hmm. you know, there's a saying that goes, uh, he gets everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so he's super cool. And I posted on Facebook, I said, I have the biggest audition of my life coming up. And I, I can't say, you, you know, I didn't say what it was that you can't. He messages me in private because this is not the biggest audition of your life. You always have other auditions. Don't do that to yourself. You know, that's great yep. advice, too, because then that takes the elephant off your back. Sure. Yep. That, that's and, excellent advice. Um, and then I also had um, one of my teachers, Dave Shalansky, who uh, has appearances in um, 
uh, Sex in the City, uh, Grey's Anatomy, uh, Big Dogs, which is I met another actor from Big Dogs who gave me great advice. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another web part, I guess. And uh, it's, it's Southland, one of my all-time favorite television shows. So and it was funny because my wife Megan is a huge fan of Grey's Anatomy. And she's like, oh my god, this is Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Tell me about so, it. My wife so too. She, what's that? My wife too. Oh. It, when that show's on, she's glued to it, and I, mm-hmm. and I can't talk to her. I either have to be silent or literally, you know, if I'm talking, she doesn't hear me. So. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, so he let her be in the class, and she was like, he, he, it's, just, it's just funny. He's, his personality is, is all over. It's serious. He's dry sense of humor. He's sarcastic. Like, so he was, like, messing with her. And, like, he was letting her ask, ask questions and stuff and, you know, watch, watch, watch the class. And so did Blanche and some others. And, you know, everybody – it was just funny because those three people taught at the same, class, at the same school – all different personalities, which is why it was such an amazing, such an amazing thing to go to acting school with all these teachers. Yeah, because you get to see the different personalities. Ah, you know, come on, you know, like whatever, you know, do you know? Because and then it helps you. Um, it just helps you realize that we're all in this together. We're, we're, it's okay to have a different personality. Yeah, the diversity is good. Yeah, and those three, and as, as also Caroline, you know, I can contact them and they'll respond to me. They'll, they'll read stuff for me. They'll, they'll do, they'll, you know, they're so caring mm-hmm. and it's incredible. Yeah. You know, you mentioned your wife, Megan. Um, I'm assuming she's got to be a great supporter of yours. Well, that's, that's interesting because she is without a doubt. She's, she's without her. I wouldn't be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, our first date, all the wacky stuff that happened, all, you know, it, it was one of those, Days is so spectacular that you just keep going on and on and on. Mm. And I kept going on and on verbally. <laughs> and I actually accidentally stumbled across the character that we'll talk about later. Oh, like, oh boy. Oh, I'm too comfortable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, she, boy. Was, she was okay with it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe okay. not 100 Definitely not 100%. <laughs> definitely not 100%. She was accepting really of it. <laughs> led on to it, though. You know. So I was just like, okay, you know. And then uh, shortly after we became official, she read my uh, part of my my feature length horror script that we'll get into later. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, she, she was like reading the opening scene. I'm like, I got to I got to go. Like, I really do. She goes, OK, I'll walk into your car. Then she holds on to me for dear life. She goes, please tell me that you are the person I think you are, not the person that I think you, you could be. Or <laughs> well, I was like, no. And, no, you, like, and you said yeah. you'll have to wait and see, dear. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I leaned in closer and I sniffed her hair as she was saying that. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, for her to stick with you after that, Dave, I think I think you guys are made for each other. Yeah, and, and it's funny because she's my audition partner uh, for when I do the uh, video auditions. I don't know how she does it. She has a camera in one hand, the script in the other hand. She's perfect with the framing. She's reading the script. And, you know, just the conversations we have wow. are, are the craziest things ever. You know, so like the other day, I had an audition where my character gets shot in the head, right? Mm-hmm. And she goes, do you want to watch uh, like a video on somebody getting shot in the head? I'm like, babe, I've, I've got shot in the head before. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> So, it was funny because it was my previous audition I got shot in the head. I had several auditions where I kept getting shot. <laughs> Are they trying to tell you something, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like yeah. You know, so Megan is not un- a sign that I want. <laughs> yeah. Megan is an unsung hero in, in your career. Not unsung because you certainly sing her praise, but in your career. Good old oh. Megan, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, and she, she's like, you know, you're going to, I will not let you fail. We're going to achieve your dreams together. We're a team. Um, and you know, but you know, this is also a part of her too, because her family is very musical. She's on stage. She kills it at karaoke. You know, her dad performs, uh, you know, they, they, they're, uh, they're the instruments are singing and they, you know, they got it all covered. So she's always been, you know, a part of that mm-hmm. the, the world kind of, um, so actually I forgot to mention the veterans in, uh, media and entertainment. Yes. They got me to a red carpet event. I got an invite for uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, which was a um, military movie starring Tina Fey and uh, Margaret Roby. And um, so they, they uh, so my wife and I have been on a red carpet before. 
Yeah, we've been on the red carpet before, and it was it was just it was just amazing because because they wanted the military people there. So we uh, we walked the red carpet, and then you know we went to the movie theater with Tina Fey. She was extremely nice. They had cool. you know they had popcorn, they had soda, they had media, and you know it was just really cool to see the layout of how they do those uh, yeah. uh, events. You know, so that helped me too. And plus, we got to get all dressed up, and I you know women like that, and I, you know <laughs> I, you know. It was good. It was. It was. Well, but Dave, saying. Dave, you get dressed up every part, so it's nothing new for you either. <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah. a regular person, dress up, okay? <laughs> yeah. So you know, between that and and having and uh, uh, being on a lot of sets as background and speaking, and and also when I when I did Quantico, it was uh, on location. At, it was uh, like away from the studio, so they had my um, my locker room. A dressing room, whichever you want to call it, mm-hmm. in a uh, like on a trailer. <laughs> so I, I walk mm. in there, I'm like, oh, this is it was all for me. They had like a, a little room here, a little bathroom, like a little room here, and just I was like, wow. See, yeah, you know? that's that's got to be a great feeling. Something like it, that, it, you know? yeah, yeah, it was surreal. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, I bet. So I, I like to think that I've had all aspects of it. Obviously, you know, I want to keep going. I want to keep going higher and better and doing all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I've seen myself on the big screen. I see myself on TV. So, you know, I'm not going to stop. But if I did, I, I would be, say, you know, pretty satisfied. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, know? you know, Dave, it's, I mean, obviously you're tremendously busy. But have you ever considered writing a, a, a book, like a how-to book? For up and coming actors, what to expect, what to go through. I mean, maybe that's down the road. Maybe it's down the road. Maybe, but you know, yeah, that's something yeah, that's, you can I like consider. that idea. My you wife know. said I should actually be able to uh, teach a class. Sure. Yes. Yeah. You you have so much knowledge to 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 give Thank to you. others too. But anyway, Thank you. that's my silly two cents. But I think no, it, it's, you, it's know, good. you should it's consider good. it. Yeah, I appreciate now, it. Now you know, family and friends, supportive. Um, and I'm assuming a lot of your, or, or or most of your fellow actors are. How are they on set? Are they? Is it competitive, or do they offer advice, or is it really up to the individual actor? You know what I mean? How, yeah, do they it's encourage up to the you? individual actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, like I, I said uh, earlier, one of them, you know, led me to a Dreammaker Talent, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, the management, and and I like doing that for people too. But when when I do that, I I want to. Uh, so, so there's one thing that made me mad and that was you know i like to give i like to give help people all i can you know but before i i let you use my name i need to know things about you i need to know that you're good enough to send for me to send to my management you know i'm not trying to be conceited but there's a level you know to see if you're ready or if i can work with you to make you ready sure. i gotta know where you're at mm-hmm. and yeah. uh this one girl on Quantico, I was just shooting a breeze with her and the background girl when I was a uh, you know principal, and she uh, and, I, and I gave you know I told her the information and I said send me uh, send me a, a video of your work. So she does, you know, like days later, and I really didn't like it. I, I couldn't really tell if she was serious or just messing around. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to respond to her. I'm going to see if she reaches out to me again, and she never did, but right until after she reached out to my management. Mm. And I don't, I don't know if she used my name or not, but yeah, I made sure right. that I contacted my management and said I did not give anybody permission to use my name. Yeah, absolutely. So from yeah. that point forward, anytime I referred people, which I have done, I, I wrote, uh, I wrote a letter, I sent it as an attachment, and I like signed it or like whatever I did, just so my management would know that I support this person. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's yeah. A very wise thing to do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah, but um, I guess, yeah, I guess, I guess you know, fellow actors look at you as competition sometimes too. That's the, that's the problem, I guess. And, hey, yeah, this guy's fine yeah. for my part. Why should I be nice to him or whatever? Yeah, and, and I'll be honest. Uh, I try not to help people that look like me. Yeah, because that it, makes then I'm sense. Myself. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's something I wouldn't have thought of. Yeah, of course. You know, I I, I, I would do it if I if I if I know you and I you know there, there are reasons why I would do it, but I like to not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no, uh, no, that's completely understandable. Yeah, so, but a lot of people root for each other. I mean, they, they really do, mm-hmm. you know, but it's, it is also cutthroat because yeah. you can only cast one person for each role. Yep, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, even A-list celebrities compete against each other and stuff like that, mm-hmm. so. Has, has there ever been a, a, a time in your life, Dave, I mean, since you got the writing bug, 
I, I almost I think I know the answer to this. When you doubted, gee, is acting for me or not? Because I would say no. You've never had that feeling, but has that ever? Have you ever said uh, is this uh, for me? Should I continue I, with this? So you know? so I'm not going to go into, into detail on, on this one aspect, but I, I had a lot of of, of issues. You know, uh, verbal disagreements with people and just, you know, uh, for whether, um, whether it's because they didn't understand the career field or didn't understand why I would want to pursue it or, you know, they were trying to help me in ways that I didn't want to be helped or, you know, out of love or like whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but there, I always had somebody to turn to somehow, even when I was like, honest to God, I'm crying, breaking down and just wondering if this is for me. I'm like, yeah, I got to call this person. You know, mm-hmm. I got to go to this person's house. You know, I, I got to call Solomon. I got to I got to go to the, the Fisher Campbell house, you know, and let them calm me down. Let, like, you know, uh, for what, you know, let them do what they did. I don't want to get into details. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. You know, my 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 some people from uh, my military family, Rob Nelson, Vince, Vince Cardiel, people of different ages, you know, because because I was at the duty, I was going home and I'm like, this is kind of freaky. It's scary. You kind of like let, you know, a bird flying out a window. Which way do I go? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know. And, uh, you know, just people like, like, like Diane Smith, who, um, I, I worked with at the, in, in the, in the rat cage in the liquor store, very sweet lady. And as a writer, as a writer, you got to have a notebook. Got to have a notebook. I came up with a million ideas for my comedy that I mentioned a little bit and my horror. And I'm like, so I ran paper, I ran receipt paper. I'm just all these notes, all these notes, all these receipt papers, you know, <laughs> and, you yeah. know, but, and then she's just like, um, you know, wants to know about what I was doing. So I was like, can I tell you about my horror? She goes, eh, I don't really like horror, but okay. Uh, with the comedy, she's like, you know, so she let me talk about all of that, which I needed to release because I was stuck at work. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> and uh, my uh, my friend Heather, who I've known for years, she, she I, I, I had nobody to uh, help me film some an audition. She came spur of the moment, helped me film it. I got the role, a, a Nike commercial. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend uh, Serena, who is a photographer, she's taking the pictures of uh, Trevor. You know, the, the latest ones, yeah. the latest photo shoot. Great. And, uh, you know, like uh, my cinematographer for my upcoming movie, Mike Gamble, he's also doing the pictures. And, and just and it's funny because I, my cast and crew are people that I've met along the way, either through talking to people who say, oh, I know this person. Like, you never know who, never know who knows who. Even if it's just Joe Schmo down the street, you never know who they are, really, right. who yeah. they know. Yeah. I met I met somebody that, that is a part of my project in the dog park on the complex right here. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just, you know, it, 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 in the, my cast, I met throughout the years. And I'm like, yeah, you know, my, my movies were years in the making. I'm finally getting to it. But it was worth it because I handpicked these people because I know they're good. Some of them are better than the celebrities I've worked with. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, and they need a break. They're nice people. That's the number one thing. If you're a nice person, I'm going to help you. If you're not, get out. Yeah, leave. Man, you know, you know nice, you know, nice I, goes I guess, far, doesn't it? Smart. Nice, nice goes far, doesn't it, Dave? Yeah, be ni- yeah, yeah, yeah. And one of my all-time favorite sayings is a saying that my dad told me. I don't know where he got it from, but uh, it goes, people may not remember what you said to them, but they'll remember how you made them feel. No, that's beautiful. You know, yeah. And, and, and in this so industry, you, you can't do anything yourself unless you're going to mm-hmm. do a, a selfie video or something ridiculous. You need everybody. Yeah. You need the crew. You need the cast. You need the light. Like, and everybody. You yeah. Craft services. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, Just be nice in general. Why not? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It, it seems such a simple thing, but I don't know. Some people have a problem, but it's just so much easier to be nicer. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's true. And, and it also, goes so far. Um, you know, so yes, I had a wonderful cast of of friends and family support me. Like, uh, like I said, my brother is doing the uh, the, the poster. He's the co-directing. My sister let me film at her house. My brother-in-law let my brother film at his salon. And you know, my parents are helping with the wardrobe and you know, it's all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, but when I was when I was uh, active duty, right, I got to my first base, which is in Japan. Um, I was stationed in Japan and also in Arizona. Um, I got to Japan right before Thanksgiving. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't, didn't really have any friends. I didn't know anybody. Yeah, what a, It was yeah. like literally right before. So I spent Thanksgiving alone. Uh, you know, I had to take home uh, meals from the chow hall and watch the movie on my portable DVD player that somebody let me borrow. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, I, right? Um, what's that? Happy Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. 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 And then um, so I was like, you know, Christmas time, I'm not doing this. I'm not spending it alone. Forget that. Because at that point, I was with other newcomers to the base. 
and there was a program or whatever. So I was like, you know, I asked my buddy if he wanted to come with me. He said no for whatever reason. So I was like, you know what, fine. I'm going to go find a group of like-minded people. People are trying to be happy. So I found a church uh, group, and they were doing a breakfast, and then, you know, social. It was just something, you know? Mm-hmm. Don't don't let yourself get depressed. I mean, I know people have issues with it that they can't help, but yeah. always try to be around like-minded people or yeah. positive people, mm-hmm. you know? Good advice. And, I'm sorry, what? Good advice. Yeah, and also, if, if, if people give you advice... Mm-hmm. And you like it or you don't like it, you know. You should, you should really evaluate who's saying it and if they use it with their life. Yeah, yeah. You know, let okay. Yeah, I'll listen to everything, and then I'll kind of like a like a filter. I'll, I'll take what's you know what what applies to me and whatnot. But don't just turn a person off, you know, just because you think. Uh, yeah, it's always good just to, to take advice. You're so right, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, because even if the people didn't use it, maybe they should have. And then, yes. well, you didn't, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with what you said, because mm-hmm. you know that it's the better way to go. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned, um, just we just talked about the you know, military again. Tell, now, there's something about you portraying Darth Vader at a live event. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, my goodness, yes. <laughs> Share that I with us, please. I don't want to mention the name of the company because they had legal issues and mm-hmm. all, all that okay. stuff. So, so tell us funny. what you can. I auditioned as... Like the Joker, I, I, I auditioned as my character, mm-hmm. you know, not, you know, and then, you know, so I said, I can do the, I can do like all this other stuff, whatever, whatever. So they called me, they're like, can you play Darth Vader? I'm like, I wasn't expecting you to ask me that, but I've always wanted to do it my whole life, so yes. <laughs> I was like, what are you, what are, what are, did you not see my audition? <laughs> so, so they're like, okay, you're going to go to this spot, and you're going to pick up the guy playing uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and you're going to do a kid's party. I'm like, okay. Okay. <laughs> so I picked this guy up, right? And, and, and the, the costumes are top notch or whatever. I'm like, so uh, what are we doing? I have no clue. <laughs> and he goes, oh, we're going to do some uh, Jedi training and, you know, with the kids. I'll, I'll do Jedi training and then you come at me, you know, you interrupt and we fight. So, you know, I have a lightsaber fight. I'm like, okay, okay, sure, sure, sure. You know, like this is right as we're pulling up to the house. And then, like, I, I'm, I have my head covered because I don't want them seeing Darth Vader. And, uh, so we're changing, you know, it was rushing. We're changing. And the mother's like, how soon, how soon? And of course, they have wardrobe problems and all this other stuff. And um, we go, dude, 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 how are we going to fight? What's that fight going to be? He goes, okay, left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right, up, down. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know, so um, it wound up being perfect uh, somehow. I don't know. <laughs> somehow all these events with this company wound up going smooth. I don't get it. <laughs> hey, Dave, it's a good thing they didn't ask you to be an Irish Darth Vader. Then you might have had a. <laughs> then you may have had a problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't even imagine how that would go. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how you breathe with, like say oh, with an Irish accent. <laughs> I don't know. I think you'd find. I have a feeling you'd find a way though. <laughs> oh, so so that went well, right? And then um, I wound up doing uh, Incredible Hulk for this company, a kid's birthday party. And one of the, the guy playing Captain America was somebody I wound up acting with on Quantico. Uh, wow. So, and that went well. Mm-hmm. And then, and then uh, we Chewbacca, did uh, two other, so we, we crashed. It wasn't just birthday parties we did. We crashed um, a, uh, a work event. Mm-hmm. Like people, were, people were at this fancy place, whatever, like dance floor, whatever. And we just crashed. We just came right through and we started performing a Star Wars show. <laughs> I think so, what, wasn't Chewbacca. Like, wasn't I'm Chewbacca, Chewbacca yeah. and I can't see, and my feet my feet are really slippery because the costume was a full body costume, and I'm doing crowd control. <laughs> I'm like it was it was horrible. Oh my! And then when then when the performance was over, my my cast walked a certain direction, and I couldn't even find them. I couldn't <laughs> see. They, and all the while, costume didn't fit, and it was just it was horrific. All the so while, I, you're thinking I'm an actor. <laughs> yeah, I was like. Keep it cool, Chewy. Keep it cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know, luckily, I, you know, I was able to do the Chewy noise. I could do Darth Vader stuff like that. Um, so, but anyway, so then um, there was two other events that really stand out. Um, again, I played Chewbacca. It was a kid's birthday party, but not just any family. It was uh, Grammy Award winner Lauren Hill's house. Holy smokes. <laughs> I went to Lauren Hill's house to perform. Wow. <laughs> Can you share? Can you share any of that with us? Uh, she was, well, 
it was, it was, it, so I go into the house and they immediately make, make a right, you know, into the room right there. <laughs> the place, the house was big. We weren't really allowed, we weren't allowed to walk the road or anything. So, um, because, you know, they're all outside and it's just a lot of us. And, um, it was, she was, she wound up, she was very nice. She, she, uh, you know, stayed to her, herself and her, you know, the party, whatever, but she did give us food and like, she, you know, very nice, you know? Mm-hmm, nice. That's um, good to hear. So, but at a cost, like, <laughs> the guy playing, I'm, I'm Chewbacca, and the guy playing uh, Han Solo was a guy I met on the set of Billions. And I, he just, he just irritated the hell out of me. And of course, he's playing Han, uh, Han Solo. I mean, sure, naturally. I'm like, he, he, the guy's like, you know, nice guy, but like, he, yeah, he had ADHD to the fullest for sure or something. <laughs> uh, we're about to walk out the door, and I said, dude, can you like hold on to me or can I hold on to you because I can't see? He goes, yeah, sure. He opens the door and just walks out <laughs> on his own. I'm like, come on! You had one job! <laughs> I'm laughing here. I was oh like, oh, it was, it, was, it, was, it was challenging, but <laughs> yeah. it, it was a cool experience. To say the least, challenging. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so then the other one, the other one was massive. It was, it was epic proportions. So I had to leave the night of my birthday, which was, which was phenomenal. You know, I knew I was playing Darth Vader. It was a massive event. It was the biggest event in the company's history. And they were, we were being flown to Arizona. The whole, the whole cast was being flown to Arizona. Wow. And I had the script emailed to me. It's, uh, you know, Princess Leia's lines and everybody's lines. And I'll, I memorize the whole entire script. I get to the airport and there's no Princess Leia. And I said, uh, where is, is she coming? Like, no. I'm like, well, she's in the script. Oh, yeah, we're not using that script, really. Like, oh. what are we doing then? <laughs> Holy Christmas. Yeah. And, and, you know, so they're like, oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> this is the biggest event in the history of this company. And I'm playing Darth Vader. And there's no... <laughs> I got lines. I got to, you know, and there's this guy, this parkour guy. I don't know. Who, who's this guy? And they're like, oh, he's your, uh, your sidekick guy. Uh, and I'm like, uh, they, have, they gave me a whole background story on him. I'm like, I need something. <laughs> they gave me more lines to memorize the night before. And I said, like, and then we didn't oh, even go over Lord. to fight yet. Yeah. Oh, my God. And so I was like, what, the heck? what is going on? But it was insane because they had a chauffeur pick us up from the airport, take us to uh, this like resort type hotel. All the meals were paid for and they, they chauffeured us the next day to uh, the land. <laughs> There's multiple <laughs> houses on this land. One, they, they gave us a house to change in the other, and the party was happening at the other house. And of course, you know, well, at, well before they picked us up, we ran through the fight. There's m- multiple people. We ran through the whole event. There was a, a guy playing um, Yoda who was a uh, short person. I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, three Small feet tall. Mm-hmm. He, uh, this is funny. Are you a wrestling fan at all? Yes. He had a WrestleMania match. He was one of like 13 little guys against King Kong Bundy. <laughs> okay. And it's, just, it's just a whole interesting cast of people. And uh, so uh, we're changing in, in this house. And, well, actually, you no. Know, as we're going through the fight, the guy running the company is trying to get the music together. He's like, uh, you know, trying to figure out how he's going to play the music and uh, like trying to figure all this out right before we're going to get picked up. Oh, my The biggest word. event, we were getting paid a lot of money each. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> um, well, so, getting... of course, yeah. of course, uh, I'm the last, one of the last ones to leave the house because the you know, beginning of the event is the um, Jedi training and the whole stuff, whatever. So, my my costume falls apart right before I'm about to go out. Of course. So they had to get like uh, paper, I mean, uh, like clothes pins and just uh, all this whatever <laughs> to hold it together. <sighs> so I get back there and they're playing, you know, the Darth Vader music and I interfere. And it is crazy because it's a like a, uh, a, a deck, a huge, huge deck. Half these people are so rich. They had performers on one half of the deck and then they had us performing. You know, like, it was. Yeah, just, right, right. So we, we do the whole thing, and it was super, super cool because a little guy playing Yoda beat up my, uh, my pony. Um, well, so when I announced him, he did his parkour flip of, off, you know, it, onto the deck from outside. Wow. And it was super cool. He, like, rolls up, and we did this. It was amazing. They must have and, loved, like, they must have loved yeah, your performance. And Yoda picks him up on his shoulders and, like, and slams him, and so he <laughs> fails me. And 
I, I, I go up to my, my sidekick guy and I'm like giving him a hard time. And then he's like, no, 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 Darth, no. And he runs, runs away. And you know how Darth Vader can do stuff with the, uh, without touching? Of course. Yeah. The Jedi. So he, he, he grabs onto a flagpole like he's a flag. And then I, <laughs> I bring my hand down and he falls down. Wow. Oh, it was, man. It was incredible. What a show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and so. I'm burning like crazy because it's Arizona. I'm, and I'm <laughs> wearing right. like this leather That's stuff. Right. I'm burning oh, through God. my costume. Mm-hmm. I, I, I wound up being extremely beat red in my upper body when I took the costumes off. My face was burning. Everything was burning. My hands were burning. And so I'm, I'm, after the, the show is over, I'm doing uh, fighting with the kids one at a time. Right. So the guy running the show pulls me aside, and then I'm like, okay. And then he goes, I'm going to bring you inside, you know, so you can cool off. And I look over, and my sidekick is fighting these kids. I said, no, I'm Darth Vader. They want to fight me. Yeah. Oh, wow. Boy. So I start. So I start Anything for your craft. Yeah. I get through everybody. I'm like, okay, take me now. Takes <laughs> me to the house. I get undressed. And he goes, they want you back out there for happy birthday. <laughs> so I put all my stuff back on. Again, like, the life of an actor. But you know what, Oh, Dave? my goodness. You think of all oh. the people you made. But, so the reason why that ties into my military time right. is because my second base was in Arizona. And I got to see – I made uh, my best friend uh, – I made a best friend in uh, Japan, and he wound up going to Arizona so, while I was there. So I got to see him for the first time in eight years. Wow. How cool is that? Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. And, and another thing um, – one of my best friends from – another one of my best friends from Japan wound up going to – when, I was, when I, was, I was stationed in Japan, then I went to Arizona, and then he got stationed in the same base in Arizona, and then I moved home back to New Jersey after I got out, and he wound up performing musically in uh, New Jersey, so we, we, we met up then, too. And he's Man. actually going to do a song for my upcoming movie, too. Oh, wow, wow, again. Everything yeah. interweaving. And you know what, Dave? Think – you know, all the – you know, the, the physical demands that you had – Playing, but can you imagine how happy you made everybody? Ah, you know, with all you went through, with with you know, you you being yeah. beat red and everything. And that's a, I mean, that's another thing. I mean, it's so great the stuff you do. That's you see, that's the thing. Like one of the main reasons why I want to be famous, like have the face that people recognize, is because I absolutely love the work that people do with Make a Wish. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. all you need to do is yeah. show up. Uh huh. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Anything else you do is even more uh, icing, uh, yeah. beyond. Icing, yeah. Well, icing on the cake, yeah. Yeah, it's just to, just to make people happy. Mm-hmm. Is, is you can't put a price on that. No, it is, it is priceless. You're right. It is priceless. Now, Dave, I'm going to mention a title: "Haunting of Hill House." The Haunting of Hill House. Yeah. I think there's you have a story behind that as well. Okay. <laughs> can't so, wait to hear it. Um. <sighs> I don't recommend – you know Mila Kunis, the course, actress? Sure, absolutely. She – I don't know if you know, but she lied about her age to get on that 70s show. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. But, yeah. So um, they – I, so I go, I go to this audition, right? And I'm thinking about stuff like that. And uh, I didn't know what it was for because for the big things, they don't tell you. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a big role in something – they don't tell you. Um, usually, they have like a working title or whatever. So, and my name was Tall Man. I'm like, oh, okay, no name again. <laughs> what that? Come on, give me something juicy. So I go in there, and uh, they asked me if I could uh, use if I use stilts, and I just made up a story. I just stumbled my way through the answer, and they're like, you know, okay, time to perform. So I, I perform, and you know, I could tell they were interested in it. Uh, I got a great reaction from an entire room filled of people, uh, full of people. So uh, I go home, and I remember it was that day or the next day. I'm driving somewhere, and uh, my manager calls me. She goes, and my manager, when the manager calls, that means this is something big. Mm-hmm. You know, you're about to get the wall or, you know. So she goes, Daddy, he said, they really liked you, but they didn't really understand if you could walk on stilts or not. <laughs> I'm like she's like, can you walk on stilts? I'm like, well, you know, but she's like, yes or no? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, do, you know, sure. <laughs> I, I, I know somebody that has stilts, so I'm gonna go to her house now. <laughs> like, I tried not to beat her on his answer, and uh, you might know her name, Bettina Sky. Oh, I, I had the pleasure of interviewing her. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think course, we all you know, know Patina, Sure. 
Yeah, one of her uh, side gigs is a clown. Mm-hmm, so right? she had still. So I drive an hour or so to New York to, to her house. <laughs> and and she's just it's so nice. Like she's, she's a great, great person. You know, just yeah, very helpful, very nice, so nice, very yeah. open. Um, I go to her house for the first time. I'm like, do you have still? She goes, yeah, yeah, I still. So, <laughs> you know, we're, we're more concerned about me trying to uh, learn this real fast. Right. And I get on the stilts. And we're not thinking, but the ground's not flat. And I fall over immediately. <laughs> I was like, no, like you don't want to fall from that high up on the concrete. That's not a good feel, you know? Yeah, yeah. But but it actually was helpful because I mastered it immediately. Wow. And, uh, she, she helped me through it. I mastered it immediately. Oh, going up, you know, and I went back to my parents' house and going up hills on rocks. So I managed to, yeah, I could do it. I could do it. And then so they, they booked me. Um so uh, then, then they bring me in, and I still have no clue what this is for. Right, yeah. So they, they bring me in to have a meeting with me. And the people that I, some of the people I auditioned in front of, they're there, and uh, they're showing me, though, this is what, they're showing me footage. And there's all this stuff on the screen, numbers and everything else, and I'm just like, okay, they're like, this is what your, your character is going to be. And I'm like, this is my character is going to be like, I'm thinking. So they show, what they wind up showing is the unedited version of the director's take on on the stuff they film. Because there's all this, like, production stuff, I can say. I don't want to get into it. I don't want to ruin it for mm-hmm. people. But I was like, this is the this is the crappiest thing I've ever seen in my life. I was like, what is it, a B-rated thing? How do they let all these mistakes go? Right. And they're like... Oh, you know, um, that's what I'm thinking to myself. But then, I, then I was like, "Wait, there's a timer going up," and they're like, "Oh, yeah, this is the pre-production for the premiere, of the release of Haunting of Hill House for Netflix." Mm. So wow. I was like, "Oh, that's why this looks terrible because they didn't make the edits yet, they didn't make the right. adjustments, yeah, and they, yeah. didn't, they didn't fix the things, and they, this is not what they're going to show the public, basically." <laughs> but I'm just like, oh, "Okay, you know, <laughs> how did they, am I the one that notices these things?" <laughs> Completely clueless. All right, so then I, I go there, and um, this this was really really awesome. It wound up being like the main event of Comic Con. Mm-hmm. So what I didn't know at the time was the the last panel, the last Q and A for Comic Con that year was Haunting of Hill House. So they have I'm not there, but this is what I heard. They had the uh, the cast on the stage, and they have a huge screen. They're going to show the trailer. So the cast does a Q&A. The lights go off for the trailer. While that's going on, they switch the cast members out with girls who had all this makeup on and had broken necks because that was significant for the, their TV show. Mm. And um, they turn the lights on. The girls are on stage. The whole audience freaks out. Hundreds of people are scared yeah, out man. of their minds. And I, was, I heard that they were so scared that they wouldn't take the invitations from the girls. So they had to, like, slam it into people's chest so they would take it. Oh, man. What? Yeah, so the invitation was for the private screening later on at another location, which is where I was. Mm-hmm. And um, they gave me prosthetics, and they did all you know, on my face and on my hands. And um, it was so cool because the people that were doing my, my makeup, um, they, you know, so I'm, I'm, in, I'm sitting on the chair. I have multiple people working, uh, working on me at the same time. And there's this guy who's standing behind me holding my head because my neck was really hurting. Mm-hmm. Um, because there was no there was no head support. Oh you know? yeah, right. A, of it course, it was a director's chair. So yeah, he's like, sure. he goes, oh, oh, okay. I was like, do you mind if we take a break for a second? Because I got a cramp, and, and he's like, oh no, I'll hold your head. I was like, are you holding my head? <laughs> like, I don't want. You know, I'm grateful, but I, I feel like you know you're not beneath me. You know, yeah, you're sure. on my level or above me or something. Mm-hmm. You know, he goes, that's okay. I do it for James Franco. He was like, for um, oh, no. the movie, uh, the TV show uh, Deuce. Yeah, yeah. Deuces. I think I think that's what it was, the yeah. HBO show at the time. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, he goes, well, because James Franco, he teaches in like California and then he flies to New York. So he falls asleep in the uh, chairs are doing his makeup. So I'm always holding his head. Holy, <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I was like, wow. <laughs> These are the makeup people that work on James yeah. Franco's uh, tattoos and all right. that. And hold my- well, cool. in that case, sure, hold my head up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, well, I'm <laughs> at it. <laughs> Boy, isn't that something. Yeah, and it was okay. so funny because when they were done, with my, I had my clothes on. I had the... the thing i'm looking around uh the the dressing room for a mirror and it didn't dawn on me that i i just saw a mirror and i kept looking so i looked back because i didn't recognize myself wow holy smokes it was it was super cool yeah 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I wound up portraying the, the tall man who was uh, the the spirit, I guess you could say, of Henry Hill, the main the main the main father. Yeah. Uh huh. Wow. Um, Very so cool. So I'm like, well, you know, one great benefit that you have when you're acting at a premiere is nobody knows what to expect from the show, so they can't say you're doing anything wrong. Right, yeah, they haven't seen it, it yet, sure. Yeah, and, and I knew some things, I knew uh, points that I wanted to hit because I watched the director's take. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, people were just, was, was, that place was so packed, security had to throw people out because they were in illegally. Well, oh, man, because you know? they were all, yeah. And there was people, uh, people were just, it, it was so crazy. You know, as soon as I got off the elevator, people were freaking out. People were freaking out on the elevator, just freaking out, freaking out. And like, that's got to be kind I, of a I, cool feeling. What's that? <laughs> that's got to be kind of a cool feeling. Oh, yeah. And, and there's, there's this other feeling was so crazy. No, I'll never feel this again, I don't think. Maybe I will. Who knows? They escorted me into the bar area, I guess you could say, the bar lounge where, where the premiere was going to be. And I want, it is darkness. And all these people are crowded around me like a, like a shoehorn. Mm-hmm. And all, all I see are flashes, the cameras. I don't know who's, I couldn't even see faces. Yeah, man. <laughs> and it's just, you know, I'm doing my thing. And, you know, I wound up uh, walking up behind people who were sitting down. I stuck my head between them like the character does. And <laughs> yeah. the people were people were saying that I should win an award. Like he should yeah. win, uh, I don't know, I can't think of the top award, like a Emmy or whatever. Like they mm-hmm. were just praising me like crazy. Yeah. And what was really funny was on the elevator ride up, the, uh, the production guy was like, I, I'm so happy that we picked you. You know, you oh, got the man. right person. Oh, fantastic. And, and I was about to get all sentimental. Then the door opened. I'm like, oh, yeah, going to be scary. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Why are you doing that to me, man? <laughs> no time for sentiments now. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> so it was great. It yeah. was cool. Oh, a lot of fun. Great story, man. Now, listen, you know, back, let's see, show number 155, I want to tell our audience, um, one of our most listened to, watched shows was number 155 in Solomon Shurtok. Again, that name, Dave, the name. No, the great Solomon Shurtok. He's, <laughs> he's such a great guy. And when he was um, on my show, he was telling us, talking about this very cool, creepy, scary Trevor franchise. Now, for those who may not have heard the show, First of all, tell us, give us some background about Trevor. And this is your baby, right? You yes, got to really, yes. please, let's get into this. So I like to consider myself to be a student of the game, and which means I, I watch all these extra videos, the special features, not just the movies. Um, I was watching the special features for uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Mm-hmm. I was watching the making of. And they said what uh, Freddy's mask is made out of which is foam latex, and it's like it's like his skin. So I'm like, that is something I want to look into. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, I said people were afraid of clowns, so looked up a clown mask, found one, altered it, you know, ed- added stuff to the look. Um, and then, uh, you know, at a later date, but, like, so I'm like, I'm in my room, and I, there's two dolls Laying here, one's like a ventriloquist uh, <laughs> clown doll. The other one's a bat baby. It looks like something out of the Inquirer or one of those fake newspaper things. Right, right, right. That, that my brother just happened to leave behind after he moved out. <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, well, hey, bats!" And, and, I mean, the dolls and clowns. I like it so right, far. And right next to it, or somewhere in the rubble, was a green shirt that said, "This is my party shirt." <laughs> I was like, Ooh. Wow! Hello. And yep. my parents had a trench coat at their house, which I think uh, maybe belongs to my dad because nobody else knows how it got there. Right. And I was like, "Ooh!" And I thought it's just found all these pieces around my my room, including my military boots, a pair of pajamas, a pair of like, oh, like well, there we go. Wow! Because <laughs> I, I was going to a party and I wanted to, you know, you know wear something scary, creative something, not <laughs> just throw something together. So I figured those are the best costumes, the ones that you create on your own. Right. Mm-hmm. So I, I go to this party and uh, I'm scaring everybody. As soon as I, I like this, mind you, I have no idea what the reactions are going to be. I was just walking in and people were just terrified. Well, because I I also had a bag. I, I know Solomon didn't mention this because I think this might have been pre-Solomon. Um, I had uh, you know before Solomon got on board the character or whatever. Right. Could be wrong, but I had a bag. Uh, brains. I had hands. I had uh, I had uh, prop rats with uh, I pre cut their throats, and I stuck blood capsules in them. So I'm like, and I stuffed it, and I put um, 
oatmeal and red food dye in the brain. So I'm eating the brains. I'm doing all this, oh, this stuff. Man. Nice. I'm drinking, I'm drinking uh, Gatorade blood out of real IV, ba- out of real IV bag. that still had the <laughs> tube attached to it. Oh my gosh. Doing all this stuff. And the girls are, everybody's freaking out. I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. Mm-hmm. And then somebody comes up to me and he said, uh, what movie is that from? And I said, what? It's not from anything. They're like, well, you can make a lot of money off that. Yeah. And I'm like, well, if I can make a lot of money off this, I better write something for it. Mm-hmm. And the next thing I know, I'm, I'm writing. And um, and now, I, well, if I'm writing and I, I want to produce this, now I got to get into the production aspect. I got to learn about that. I got to bring in people who know about that. And I got to learn from them because I don't want to pretend like I know. And I also have to learn on my own so I can have a conversation with them. You know, but right. that came, that came a little later. Um, I, I, I've been, I've been chased by the police while wearing this costume. <laughs> I raised money for charity. I had a massive following while I was working at the mall mm. I had a security guard approached me. So, wow. yeah. um, what I did was I worked at a Halloween store. Uh, it was at the lower level of the mall. So I dressed up in full costume minus the mask and I parked in the back of the parking lot, put my mask on, drove up towards this store and parked closer so I get out and I just, you know, I was sensing, I see a security guard there in his car. Lights are flashing down, down, the, down, the, down the way. And I'm just thinking, you know, oh, okay. So then I walk through the apartment store and then I walk to the Halloween store and I walk straight to the back because I had to drop my bags and, you know, to get ready for the work day. And I come back out and my, my boss is like, you know, I had, to, I had to talk the cops away from you. <laughs> they were chasing you. Do you know that? I'm like, no. <laughs> She's like, yeah, you can't wear a mask through a department store. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. No, really? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm in character eight hours a day. This costume is, never comes off. Mm. Anytime I'm working at this Halloween store. Um, I've had people come in and hang out with me, even though, <laughs> like, I, you know, I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm working. Like, right. you know, I yeah, have a different right. voice, a different laugh and everything. And, and uh, I had somebody sit in the store and I thought he was waiting for his wife, but he was just there forever. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a cashier at this point. I'm, I'm the jack of all trades in this small store. And I'm, 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 I'm Trevor. Right. Clown. As a cashier, it doesn't matter. It didn't matter what I was doing. Then he comes up to me, he goes, you know, you remind me of uh, Heath Ledger as the Joker. And then he walked out. Wow. I said, you were just watching me the whole time? <laughs> like, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Cool. And then, so, High praise. Um, my manager, who had a, uh, her name is Dana, uh, she had a great personality. I'm sure she still does. We decided that I should stand out in front of the store and just, you know, stand there. So I'm like, okay, and to scare people, they walk by. And I did. I scared people, and they fell into, like, a rack of clothes and all that stuff. Imagine, yeah. And, and, uh, these these girls saw me moving, and then so, well, I was like, well, how am I going to pretend that I'm not real? I kept doing the same movement and then throwing in other movements. Like I was an animatronic, <laughs> oh, and they're wow. staring at me, slowly walking. And then I don't remember it was them or another group of people. They walk up to me, and I'm still as can be. And this girl walks up to me. She was like, she saw that I had like neck hair, and maybe she could see like uh, movement in my throat a little bit or whatever. And she goes. She goes, ew, he's real. I'm like, ew, and she's funny. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I even when I was on my lunch break, I was eating with this on. And when Solomon and I go to conventions, you know, people were watching me as I'm eating, and they take pictures of me, and they ask me how much I charge for pictures. Mm-hmm. I've had people of all ages, including older elderly ladies, ask me for photos. Um, oh, wow. You know, I got to the point where I got to conventions uh, – they would stop me as I'm like following Solomon. They would stop me. He would keep going. I'm like, Solomon. He turned around like, right, another person. You know? <laughs> and, uh, but also what was really cool was, um, so anyway, so back to the story of my the wall. Yeah. Um, I, I was at the lower level and I had a security guard come up to me. He goes, you can't pass this line because you're freaking everybody out. You're r- loud. Everybody can hear you all freaked out and stuff like that. <laughs> and I had a crowd at the lower level and the upper level watching me meanwhile you're thinking perfect yeah <laughs> desired yeah. effect and then, yeah. and then so my my manager comes up to me and she goes listen if somebody wants to take a picture of you they have to donate five dollars to charity because the uh the halloween company was associated with a, a, a fantastic charity for children 
Mm-hmm. So people were paying money to take pictures with me. Cool. For that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and this, this other time was super funny. Um, this, you know, there's a lot of, I can go on, but mm-hmm. there's, uh, there's one last one where I scared, freaked people out. But this kid uh, saw, thought he saw me moving. And then I realized and I stood still. And my boss was like, Okay, she goes, maybe she's like, you know, a little while later, she, this kid kept walking around looking at me. And she goes, oh, I want you to stand over here now, like, just move, like, whatever. I'm like, no, 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 no. He thinks that I'm not real. He doesn't know if I'm real. So I'm like, I need you to drag me over there. So it, it was her and a, and a co-worker. I'm stiff as a board, and they, they dragged me over there and repositioned me. <laughs> and then I scared the kid later on, of course. You know. <laughs> yeah. Now, um. We, I, I want to. This is you're developing this into a whole movie franchise and all. But I do before you even tell me about that. When Salma was a guest, he kept teasing me about the title Words, oh, and, and yeah. I say, "What? What's it about?" Salma he goes, "You know what? I, I better. I don't want to say anything. You should speak with Dave DeSico about it." So, would you come clean? Uh, what the title Words is all about? Well, this this is something. Um, so, um, again, in the rat cage inside of BJ's, <laughs> uh, in the my friend cage. Diane and I are, are spending four hours trying to come up with a name for this uh, movie, for, you know, and yeah. I wanted something that was really short, like four to six letters or something like that, uh, because I had a, a, an idea of what I wanted the logo to look like, mm-hmm. and, and I need something really short and right to the point to fit into it. Yeah. And we couldn't come up with any four hours, nothing. I mean, we're, we're using our phones to come up with uh, synonyms and uh, nothing. I was like, whoa, man. So I go to sleep that night and I have a nightmare. And it came to me in a nightmare. Wow. So I am on the bus going back to basic training for military, you know, and it was it was the bus that I was on. And just like in real life, it was all darkness, just just a bus driving into darkness. And I'm looking in, the, in you know, it's all in the nightmare. I'm looking in the, uh, you know, out the window and I see a reflection. Uh, the person sitting behind me, he looks scary. He was is so intense. And he uh, he goes, have you seen words? Have you seen words? I'm like, what is he saying? Hmm. But, and then and then in my I think it was the beginning of my oh, it was the beginning of my nightmare. He, I, I saw him stabbing somebody to death, stabbing, 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 stabbing. Wow. And then, you know, and then it got to me on the bus. And then he said, have you seen words? Have you seen words? Have you seen, I'm like, what, what is, what is he saying? What, what is this? I don't understand. I don't What is this word? What is any, you know? Yeah. So right. then, so then my nightmare takes me to uh, a military locker that we had during basic training. And when it comes to training, you have to, if you're not wearing a uniform, it has to be in perfect shape, has to be hanging on the outside of the door. And it's all it was, was this locker door. Everything else was darkness. It was the uh, the BDU, the, uh, you know, the uniform we wear. And it zoomed in on the name. The name was Wurtz. The person's name was Wurtz. Wow. Wow. And so I wake up. I'm like, what does this mean? I don't understand. Mm-hmm. So I looked it up, and I, and I couldn't find a definition for it. Instead, I came up with people's names. And they were all in the field that is related to my movie. Holy wow! I don't want to get into the detail yeah. of it. Other okay. Than that. Okay. But but then one of my uh, my friend Jen Fisher, she goes, you know, Wes Craven. She loves Wes Craven and Robert Englund. She knows all about that. She goes, Wes Craven. Anytime he comes up with something new, she's like, he's having another nightmare. He's having another nightmare. Wow. So I'm like, then that's what it has to be. You know, the name drives me insane. Right. Mm-hmm. But the guy in the nightmare is, have you seen words? Have you seen words? I'm just drilling into my head. That is. Like, that, oh, that's, then I gotta keep it. That's nicely freaky, though. You know, I'm but in a nice way. Isn't that something? Yeah, it's really. Yeah, and, and it's funny because uh, Jen Fisher and her family gave me a really nice Christmas gift uh, recently. It's a collage of me throughout the years with her family as Trevor. As Trevor has progressed, <laughs> and uh-huh. you know, the, my god kids as children, and my goddaughter who is just as a clown because of me and all this other <laughs> stuff, and and on the uh, poster. She put a wonderful saying, and this is true for all aspects of life. Uh, Wes Craven quote uh, says, "The first monster you have to scare the audience with is yourself." Mm. Yeah, that's and, very and I, cool. I think that's interesting. It is know? very interesting. Yeah, 
So, in, in other words, you have to come across to the audience? Right, you have uh, to yeah. present yourself yeah, before yeah. they be with mm-hmm. something that they'll yeah, care about. Yeah. Now, now, in some way, I guess, you know, yeah. because I, I feel like when, when people write or just people, when they, when they do things in their life, like part of their personality or whatever, it's a, it's a combination, a culmination, however you say the word, mm-hmm. of, of, of them or, or experiences they've had in life. Sure. Yeah. And if you don't, you don't go up to people, you don't talk, you don't, you know, you just stay in your shell. You're not going to accomplish anything mm-hmm. ever. Now, now what's going to happen with Trevor? Uh, not 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 the story, but I mean, this is going to be a big. Is this going to be a major motion picture? Is this what we were talking about, Dave? Well, um, so I wrote I wrote two feature length scripts. Right. One was Wurtz, and the other one was a comedy called Conflicted, and I submitted them both into uh, the 2015 Capital Fund Screenplay Contest, and they both won. Worth's place is number 17 on a top 100 hot list, and the comedy won for best comedy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. I, I, I spent I'm, a bunch of days in a row. Mm-hmm. It, took, it took me a total of 80 hours to write them. I took, I took a day off from the comedy by writing the horror and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, and they won. I'm like, so now i got to produce this stuff because that's, that's what I think is the right thing to do. Sure. And I, I, I went for the comedy first, and uh, I got a distribution offering and I got you know all the stuff going forward and blah 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 and I was like but the horror is going to sell I, I, I'm new to this the horror is what sells no yeah. matter what mm-hmm. uh, so I was like I gotta make this but I, I can't because the opening scene is so insane that that would cost me a lot of money so I'm like well what do I do uh, and Solomon said you know make make a short film version of it because that's what people do to get you know a, a deal to make the feature yeah Mm-hmm. I said, I don't want to do that because I don't want to get rid of the story. I don't want to put it out there. I want it to be its own thing. So then that's when I decided to do a short film sequel uh, called Trevor. Right. Uh, so that's that's going to definitely hit as many festivals as I can submit it to. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we'll take it from there because, you know, and another thing that's good about these conventions is you not only meet actors, but you meet people who can help. You know, oh, like people sure. who work productions yeah, and, yeah. you know, Contacts. So, uh, yeah. you know, do their own films and stuff like that. And, and they'll, they'll, some of them will accept it. Mm-hmm. And they're looking for stuff. They just say, here's my personal email. Do this. You know, send it here. We'll see. You know, so um, right now I, I, I don't want to say who, which distribution uh, company offered me something because I don't, I haven't signed with them yeah, yet. No, absolutely. I understand. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's where but, but that's I'm at right now. That's what. That's what we have to look forward to. Oh man, I guess. Yeah. I guess. I mean, um, this this has been probably the thing that's been keeping you busy nowadays. It's insane. I don't. I. I don't. When I'm if I if I'm sleeping, it's because I passed out. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm doing. I'm doing the pre production. I'm running the running everything, and you know. Um, Running multiple drafts of the script, keeping up to uh, people up to date, getting just getting everything, and and uh, you know, like I said, I, I got uh, people who are excellent, who are award winners, who have been movies in the festivals, who have uh, connections to festivals, or just or the, you know, this is funny because you know, characters, you know, they have they have the roles in the movie. I'm like, well, your character winds up doing this, and your character winds up doing this. It got to the point where at one of my meetings, I started laughing because one of my <laughs> actors is like. Oh, I, I deal with this at work, and I and I have this type of equipment that allow me to do this to help you out with that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and and I'm laughing. He goes, No, I'm serious. I'm like, I know, I, I know you're serious. But the thing is, every time I give somebody something to do, they're like an expert on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like mm-hmm. like this one guy I'm fighting is a former pro wrestler in the independent circuit. He goes, Oh, I can do this, and I know this, and I, they're like, they're like everybody, taking the production on themselves. Everybody knows better. But, yeah. Like, don't worry about this, Dave. I'll handle this. You you do other stuff. You got to do. Yeah, yeah. I'm like. I, I already knew that these people were fantastic, mm-hmm. but I don't think I could have, uh, you know, cast this any better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, how did I get so lucky? This is incredible. Because throughout the years, you get a lot of yeses, a lot of those, like this, that, the other thing. But for this, like 99% yes, 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 yes. And, yeah. and, and I'm available then too. Oh, so am I. So my people that I want to work with, the, you know, in the past, all are saying yes to this project. Well, you know, I mean, uh, from the little I've seen, I mean, I, I just, it, it's, People are going to 
totally love this and thank you be into it totally i mean uh, i i just i look so forward to it i really really do and you know having spoken with you i mean i'm not surprised it's going to be top-notch quality dave and i really yes, really it's going to be uh, it's, we actually started filming already I, um yeah you know what during the pandemic how did that work did you have to stop did you did you uh well we we um we had to do a rush shoot because we were losing one of the locations mm-hmm. um yeah. so it, it was just me and the cameraman <clears throat> so we, we had no problems with that yeah. and, you know the makeup artist uh yeah, sure that was really it. of course it was my first day of filming so my beautiful supportive wife megan was mm-hmm. there for my first every day and uh-huh. she brought our our fur children <laughs> for the support and she wore uh, a horror clown shirt of mine just you know to show the support which is really great yeah. Hey, uh, so yeah but so since it was just the two of us it was like you know no big deal yeah how are your kids when they see you dressed up do they know it's scary this yeah i was gonna say scared yeah, bark, barking is terrified absolutely <laughs> terrified the, the dogs are terrified yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like my my dog wouldn't even go like go back into the room, mm. like, and I could see her like like kicking her head around the corner <laughs> right. at a distance, and just, oh, oh man! I mean, and then I had to like convince it's... her, you know, after I took the costume off, I had to convince her. I'm like, hey, it's me. Yeah, it's, right. I had to drop down to her level. She's like, oh, you know, that's, but yeah, hate that's it. That's cute. So, Dave, I'm imagining. I mean, throughout my goodness, all of your activities so far in acting, um, you must have gotten some some advice. From people, anything you want to share? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> you won't believe where I got my first advice. Um, so I was working overnight stock at Shoprite, and mm-hmm. you know it's overnight stores closed. Who cares? I remember I was wearing like a white pair of shorts, a beat up match shirt, just you know whatever. Right. And um, I, I, you know, you work with people, you tell them about yourself, and you know. So th- so this guy knew I was into acting. One of my coworkers, and he goes, Dave, he goes, mm. he goes, I'm like, hey, he goes, Derek Luke is here. Uh, and he's from like Antoine Fisher. He's from Captain America. And Antoine mm-hmm. Fisher is one of my all time favorites. And da-da. so I'm like, oh, oh, oh man. I'm like, if, uh, you know, he goes, forget work. You go up there and talk to him. <laughs> I was like, okay, you know. So there I am in my, my beat up Mets shirt. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm being respectful because my dad taught me be respectful. We met the biggest people in sports Kobe, Peyton Manning, blah, blah, blah. Be respectful, be respectful, you know. So um, I'm waiting at the end and he, he checks out. And then I'm like, you know, I, I like Daniel Swan Fisher. You know, I'm like talking like that, you know, mm-hmm. trying not to draw attention. And he's like, oh, thank you, thank you. Well, that man talked to me for so long that the guy he was with was leaning up against the wall. And, <laughs> oh, and we're talking, we're talking, and then nice he, he's about to walk out. And I said, oh, one more thing. You know, I have, like, uh, an, an audition coming up. Like, I'm nervous and all this other stuff. And he goes, they are just as excited to meet you as you are to meet them, or they wouldn't be there. Wow. I was like, whoa. What? Yeah. He's like, okay. He's like, I really got to get going. My mom's waiting in the car. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. He goes, God bless you. Wow. How? Wow. Yeah. That is fantastic. And I was like, that's that's so true because, it, it, you know, they're there to get the best person for the job. They want you to succeed. The ca- they yeah, are, yeah. You know, casting directors. Sure. Yeah. That you is know? some great advice, isn't it, Dave? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and I spoke to uh, this writer who wrote one of my favorite movies. And he was, he was saying the word she when I came up with her. And like, I'm like, she, her. I don't know what you're talking about. It's one of my favorite movies. And <laughs> and between what he said and all, listening to interviews with all the top-notch writers, they all they all fail. They all fail. They, and, and they get the notices of rejection, but they, they keep them. They put them on their walls and stuff. And like, you only need that one yes. You just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I, I'll tell you, I, you, you must have some great inner uh, fortitude to just – you know, just to keep doing what you're doing. I mean, you're obviously, you know, so successful at what you do. But, I mean, the rejections would kill me, Dave. I mean, I think one rejection I would say, ah, forget it. But that that's well, not the way to go, right? Well, yeah, well, that's why you make your own stuff. You're not going to reject <laughs> yeah, yourself. Yeah, that's right. That's you right. Know? Yeah. Uh, you know? And you got to make people see you that way. Because, you know, if, if all these people who are not in the industry like it, then the industry people are going to be like, whoa, what are they liking? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, I had... Uh, Lance uh, Hendrickson from Aliens. Yes, sure. You know, uh, you know Solomon, and he's like, oh, you know, Dave was on Quantico, and I said, yeah, but I haven't gotten anything in a while, you know. He goes, that's okay. 
He goes, the success rate isn't very high. He goes, we all, we all don't get all the mm-hmm. roles. Don't worry about it. See, that is so great to hear people that have made it yeah, show and, you and that they too have gone through the downside. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I spoke to Kevin Smith a couple of times. <laughs> oh, great. I love Kevin Smith. Yeah, because you know, well, then you know his whole story about how he filmed that night. He was gone and all this other stuff. Yeah, yeah. And put put everything on his uh, credit cards. He goes, "Don't do that! Don't do that!" Uh-huh. He goes, I got lucky. Don't do that. You know, especially <laughs> you're married. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, that's something else, Dave. I mean, life outside of acting. I mean, that has a that creeps in. There's all these other things you have to yeah. worry about. Just, yeah. Just life. Yeah. And and he said. He said, film within your means. Don't film something, don't write a script for somebody in outer space because you, you don't have a spaceship. Mm-hmm. Whatever's around yeah. you at home. Mm-hmm. You know, just like, just like live within your means in general. Yeah. That is great advice. And you know? you know what? In life, too. Not only in film. Yeah. yeah. And he was so nice to me that we were, we were told to stop talking and keep it moving. Uh-huh. Like, he was so nice. Keep and it was, it, that was yeah. the second time I spoke to him. And he remembered me from the first time. Wow. And um, Chanel Ryan really quick. Uh, mm-hmm. the actress. Yes, she's, um, she's been a guest. Yeah, very nice. Oh, yeah. And we were, I met her at a convention and I was dressed as Trevor. And uh, we were telling her how uh, how Lloyd Kaufman from Choma yep. was talking to me about my character. He said, oh, we just made a movie about a clown. It's a shame. But he's like, but you can be, um, you can be in the next movie. He goes, we'll just, we'll stick in there. And she goes, don't do that because then you become his property. Hmm. I don't want your first appearance in his. You, you do your own thing. Don't do that. For what, what is it going to do for you? Not much, but wow. in, not in a positive light. It's yeah, yeah, sure. That's valuable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good old Chanel, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, Dave, before we before we say goodbye, I mean, we've been speaking almost two hours, and I still feel like there's a ton more things that we can talk about. Would you first? Promise me you'll come back and you know in a bit and talk about more stuff. That's Absolutely, enough. thanks. So, you and, know, and yeah. one of the reasons why I'm doing that is because you're very professional and you're very <laughs> you know respectful. Even if I accidentally talk over you, which I don't mean to do ever, you're just <laughs> I, you just roll with it. Because I've had people uh, where I did an interview, they just talk over me. Mm. I, you and, know, and it, it, sort of part, to sort the of point where I said, "Is it okay if I just mention one more thing?" And he goes, "Yeah, sure." And I said, "Okay." And I start to talk. And he talks over. He goes, "Oh, that's it for the show." And uh, I'm like, wow. Yeah. Well, thank you for saying that. But I, I even caught myself talking over you a few times. But I, I don't want to say goodbye yet because I do want to ask you one other thing, Dave. When writing your script, right? When you yes. What are there any sources or or do you look to something for inspiration or have you watched any kind of videos or things? Well, yeah, aside from the obvious ones where it would be like special features on disc and stuff and documentaries, mm-hmm. there is this channel that's called Everything Wrong With. Everything Wrong With. Everything and wrong. it's like everything wrong with Scream in 15 minutes or less. Everything wrong with all these iconic oh, movies. You know what? I've heard genre. of this YouTube channel. I, I got to watch it now that you mention it. Please like, yeah. tell us about it. Yeah. And it's crazy because I was like, what is wrong with Scream? I love Scream. That's a perfect movie. What is wrong with Nightmare on Elm Street? What is it? No, there's nothing. But they got 15 minutes on everything that's wrong. <laughs> you know, and, and they call it a sin, a sin, 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 mm-hmm. sin, 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 or something like that. Right. It, you know, Cinema something they don't like about like that, it. Yeah. Some of the stuff is petty and just dumb. I'll be yeah. honest, mm-hmm. that they mark off. But some of the stuff is incredible. I mean, my goodness, some of the things that they miss just blows my mind. Like, for example, uh, the... <laughs> Nancy, Heather Langenkamp, when she has a nightmare, um, Freddie attacks her, he rips her clothes, he smashes the, uh, the glass and, you know, of her bedroom and it gets in and rips her clothes up, da-da-da. Then she wakes up and her clothes are, are ripped, but the, the window is fine. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, and stuff like that. And you probably, and also, you, I, would, I didn't notice that. I bet you hadn't noticed it either until I pulled no, it. That no, no. Yeah. And, and with Chucky, you know, the house blew up, but how is he fine? How is this? How is that? Da, 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 how do you escape? Blah, blah, blah. And also, you know, this kid um, brings, brings Chucky to like, a junkyard and then walks, and then leaves Chucky to walk around, walk away to, uh, you know, relieve himself. And then the kid, he, he kid comes back and Chucky's not there. And then he hears a loud screaming noise and he goes, Chucky! It's like, why would the kid assume that the person is screaming because of right. Chucky? It's just a doll. Yes. Yep. And and also when um, 
when when Chucky was approaching this house, I forget why he was doing it, but this guy was uh, was shooting at him, shooting at a noise or shooting at whatever. And then when the kid comes running up, the kid, the guy does, he pulls out the gun but doesn't shoot. But well, why would he not shoot the kid? <laughs> right. And 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 there was one that made me do a, a big rewrite was um, in Scream when Neff Campbell visits one of the fat houses. She walks out. She's not even part of this uh, fraternity. She walk, as she's walking out, she, I think she's even outside at this point, the phone rings. And then she answers it, and then it's Ghostface, and Ghostface attacks her, da, da, and they're like, what would possess her to go in and answer a phone if she doesn't live right, there? She's not right. in a frat. <laughs> exactly. I was like, it's not her house. And, rewrite, rewrite, yeah. rewrite. This Every, is, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Everything That's Wrong is the name of the YouTube channel. Every, yes. Yeah. I highly, highly recommend it. And, and you found that very, very useful. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, Dave, I'll tell you, boy, I, I can't, I can't thank you enough. I, I, this was two hours, and it feels like we've been talking for fifteen minutes. You're such a great guest. You're so knowledgeable. You. I mean, your stories are fantastic. That's why I really, really can't wait for you to come back on sometime. And um, I, I, I just want to say thank you, and, and thanks for all the work you're doing. I can't wait for Trevor now. I mean, um, mm. it's just been a pleasure speaking with you, Dave. No, thank you so much. It's, it's been a joy. It, it, you, you say you feel like it's been 15 minutes. Well, I feel like I've been talking for 14 minutes and 59 seconds. So. <laughs> See? All right, cool. So we're on the same page with that. All right, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely, uh, definitely be in touch with each other. And thanks so much, Dave. Yes, thank you so much. David DeSico, everybody. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Oh, shit.